की भैया गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी 
first and foremost welcome i i welcome uh, on behalf of council of science and technology welcome you all uh, especially the experts and the participants uh, participants from department of science and technology participants from uh, various institutions in chatisgarh and experts uh, who who would be deliberating on the topic of basic sciences and atmanirbharta today so uh, science is a combined effort of mankind to understand the universe by observing nature and natural phenomena the basic science is defined uh, as a scientific discipline of mathematics physics chemistry biology and so on so forth they are called basic sciences because they provide a fundamental understanding of natural phenomena and processes by which natural resources are transformed so basic science basically are the you know sort of neve which actually you know later on turned into the practical or applied sciences most of the flagship big breakthroughs in development that benefit the poor have science at their core research in the basic sciences of public good and often a global public good as well basic sciences provide an evidence base for responding to many of the most basic challenges faced facing by faced by low or lower middle income countries basic science awareness is essential from an exam point of view as well me being a student and similarly every graduate level exam uh, tests student rigorously over basic sciences awareness like for example basic physics awareness basic chemistry awareness and basic biology awareness and so on and so forth so with this uh, uh, you know with the permission of director general let me first call upon uh dr s karmkar director general chatisgarh council of science and technology for his opening remarks and welcome address over to you sir okay thank you so much i hope i am audible uh, a very good morning to all of you uh, we are celebrating vigyan utsav of department of science and technology under azadi ka amrit mahotsav uh, every month uh, from uh, september 2021 the today is our 10th program uh, earlier we had nine similar programs on various themes uh, on various themes of science technology and innovations all these programs were very very fruitful and successful i am here uh, to welcome all of you to today's program i heartily welcome dr devapriya datta senior advisor department of science and technology government of india i cordially welcome all other eminent scientists of department of science and technology government of india present here today i warmly welcome all our guest speakers professor m m hambade sir former director general sikos raipur Dr. R. K. Bajpai, Director, Extension, Indira Gandhi Kishi Vishwavidyalaya, Raipur; Professor Kallol Ghosh, Director, Center for Basic Research, Basic Science, Pandit Ravi Shankar Shukla University, Raipur; Professor Govardhan Bhat, NIT, Raipur; Dr. Deep Mala Sharma, NIT, Raipur; and Dr. Sandhya Pillai, Kishan College of Bhilai. I also express my sincere thanks to all of you for your enthusiasm. and making time for participating participating in this program now i also cordially welcome all the participants from other state council scientists faculty members research scholars students and others themes of today's program is basic science for atma atma nirbharta the objective of today's programs are to understand the need of basic science and uh, second is to promote self reliance and atmanirbhar bharat through the use of basic science and to pro to motivate students it is a scholars and scientists to do the basic science joyfully as we understand basic science means the study of the structures and the behavior of the physical world uh, through observation and experiments it generates knowledge uh, of the structures and behavior of natural world but the value of basic science is readily not appreciated by lay people or even by the young students of science they would rather appreciate technologies and engineering because 
technologies and their products like mobile etc they benefit them directly now uh, they may also ask so what is the use of doing basic science so the answer will be that we do basic science because of the technologies and their products like mobile phones televisions automobiles all they have not come directly from the sky they came because there was long tradition of basic basic science research which laid down foundation of knowledge on which all these technologies and their products have developed mobile phones would not have been existed without material science that enabled the invention and miniaturization miniaturization of the transistor and the mathematics that are the basis of all softwares the wave technology was invented by cern in europe through the fundamental physics so the gis would not have been possible without uh, uh, einstein's theory of general relativity and the quantum physics artificial in intelligence is based on theories of mathematics statistical physics and signal processing so renewable energy production and storage depend on advances in physics chemistry and material science the pollution reduction as well as sustainable healthy nutrition all depend on green chemistry hiv aid treatments extend the lives of infected people through the understanding of how the retrovirus work the fight against non communicable diseases like diabetes and obesity all all will depend on knowledge of knowledge from fundamental biology as such basic science builds a pool of knowledge that the next generations also can use to apply to the problems they may have to face and we are presently facing the same similar situation how could we fight covid 9 uh, covid 19 pandemic without the contributions of basic biology physics uh, mathematics or chemistry accumulated for the decades vaccination has been strengthened and developed through identification of virus as such without the foundation of basic scientific knowledge we would not have all these technologies and their resulting products technologies are like pyramids foundation of which are basic scientific knowledge wider the foundation of the basic scientific knowledge higher the technologies uh, we can develop over it in other words basic science feeds the technologies which is like a river that will dry up if it is not fed with a source of water so realizing the importance of basic science um, government of india has established several indian institutes of science education and research called iser in kolkata pune mohali bhopal tiruvananthapuram tirupati behrampur along with indian institute of science bangalore and the national institute of science education and research called niger uh, in bhubaneswar so uh, similarly pandit ravi shankar shukla university raipur has also established a center for basic science the director of this center is here today with us and he will elaborate more the importance of basic sciences for atmanirbhar bharat atmanirbhar bharat is the vision of new india envisaged by government of india the aim is to make our country and its citizens self reliant in all respect government of india outlined five pillars of atmanirbhar bharat they are economy infrastructure system vibrant demography and demand so for making atmanirbhar bharat government of india has made several bold reforms also such as supply chain reforms for agriculture rational tax system simple and clear laws capable human resources and and strong financial system for making atmanirbhar bharat adequate scientific research in basic science and subsequent technologies have to be carried out in all sectors of growth in agriculture sector medical sector military sector industrial and manufacturing sector communication sector space research sector uh, renewable energy sector in green chemistry sector and in construction sense sector so this was a general overview i have given Uh, for the today's theme on basic science for atmanirbharta uh, with this uh, i i would like to stop and our guest speakers will be talking in details about the all about these um, uh, these aspects uh, 
uh, I believe uh, this is an uh, excellent, excellent opportunity to learn from our guest speakers. And um, I trust that uh, we will have a very fruitful program. And um, uh, thank you so much. And uh, over to um, Dr. Amit Dubey to continue with the program. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir, for your uh, uh, description of basic sciences. And, you know, showing us the line where, in which the program is being, uh, you know, to, is to be carried on. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let me call upon uh, Dr. K.K. Ghosh, sir, uh, who, who would be presenting uh, on the topic of promotion of excellence in basic science for Atmanirbhar. So, let me brief about Dr. Ghosh, sir. Dr. Ghosh is currently working as a professor of chemistry in School of Studies in Chemistry and Director, Center for Basic Sciences, Pandit Ravi Shankar Shukla University, Raipur. One of the oldest universities established in Chhattisgarh. He uh, is also a Dean of Faculty of Science and member of Executive Council of Ravi Shankar Shukla University. He received his MSc degree in Physical Chemistry in 1981, PhD degree in 1986 from the uh, same university, that is Pandit Ravi Shankar Shukla University, under the guidance of Professor S. J. Tandon. He has done his postdoctoral work on artificial siderophores in uh, the laboratory of Professor Akira Kato, Saiki University, Tokyo, Japan, as an INSA JSPS visiting fellow. He was a James Chair visiting fellow in St. Francis Xavier University, Canada. He is the recipient of Bronze Medal of Chemical Research Society of India, Bangalore and Professor B. N. Ghosh Awardee of Indian Chemical Society, Kolkata. His research interest comprises functional nanomaterial, detoxification of stimulus of chemical warfare agent, development of novel uh, reactivators, micellar catalysts, uh, micellar enzymology, surfactant, surfactant protein interaction, ionic liquids, he has published more than 200 research papers in various national and international journals. If I go on, it would be an endless exercise. So I would, I would uh, with due respect, call upon Professor Ghosh for his presentation on promotion of excellence in basic science for Atmanirbharta. Over to you, Ghosh, sir. Thank you, Dr. Dubey sir. I just, I would like to share my thing have the sharing privileges, sir. Please share your presentation. Yes, yes, yes. Is it okay, sir? Hello? It is visible, sir. Make it to the full screen mode. That's it. And please carry on. Full screen mode. Slide show. Go to the slide show, sir. Is it okay? Okay, let, let it be. Is sir, it please carry on. Uh, good morning, respected Dr. S. Karmakar, Director General of Chhattisgarh Council of Science and Technology, Professor Mukund Hambade, sir, former Director of Chhattisgarh Council of Science and Technology, Dr. Amit Dubey, Dr. Asim Raja, and many other distinguished scientists from Department of Science and Technology, as well as Chhattisgarh Council of Science and Technology. I deem it a great pleasure and honor to be part of this. Let me stop sharing some, there are some problems. Eh? Right, 
is not going on. I think. Hello. Share stop sharing. Stop sharing. I am unable to share actually. Let me just again, I will do it. Share. So I have to press on the WPS presentation or screen. It's not a number of double at more. I will. सर प्लीज कम अगेन आपकी आवाज क्रैक हुई एक बार और बोलिए सर क्या बोल रहे हैं आप मेरे को शेयर आई एम अनएबल टू शेयर एक्चुअली जस्ट आई स्टॉप शेयरिंग सेंड सेंड दैट टू मी राइट नाउ आई विल शेयर इट फ्रॉम माय एंड मेहनत करके जो है नो लेट मी से माई फाइल इज ओपन ओके सो बताओ ना भाई तुमने हेलो सर आपका विजिबल है सर शेयर स्क्रीन हुआ है सर सर शेयर हुआ है सर आपका स्क्रीन सर शेयर हो गया सर प्लीज प्लीज कंटिन्यू सर your presentation is clearly visible now unmute yourself and please carry on with your presentation it is visible sir unmute yourself what to express my deep sense of gratitude to Chhattisgarh Council of Science and Technology for giving me this golden opportunity. And as we know, as we know that uh, Department of Science and Technology and uh, State Council celebrating this Vigyan Utsav during this 75 year of Azadi ka Mahotsav, and most of the 
important aspects have been covered. Now, in this month, the theme of this Vigyan uh, Utsav is the basic science and Atman Nirvarta. Now, it is well established fact that basic science is widely recognized as an important tool for strengthening the research, technology, as well as the innovation. And in order to get a holistic approach and overall development, this basic science plays a very significant role. When I have seen the objectives of this Vigyan Utsav, there are four important objectives. And I have discussed with my colleagues, I, we have decided to discuss within this short lecture two objectives, objective one and objective four, because there are large number of target participants from school students and postgraduate students as, as well as the research call. Now, my first objective is to understand the need and joy of doing basic science. What is the use of basic science? What is the need of basic science? And COVID-19 has already taught us the importance and impact of the basic science research and self-reliance. The second objective, to motivate and to provide the opportunities to young students and to college students towards the science and research through various programs. And I'm very glad to inform you that we, that means the faculty of the Center for Basic Science, we do invite you can call it taking science to the society. And this type of activities have been appreciated by the local press as well as the people of the Chhattisgarh, and this we have already continued this process. Now, fortunately, this year, United Nations Organization declared International Year of Basic Science for Sustainable Development. And it is for the 8 billion people of the world. And no doubt about it, that science is a powerful driving force in the success of socioeconomic development. And this basic sign will help us to figure out the strategies for the self-reliance. And before I start my lecture, I'm very much appreciated the tremendous progress and technological advancement of the science for the last 75 years. But when I close my eyes, I was a little bit disappointed because the first 92 years ago, the first Nobel Prize was awarded Dr. C.B. Raman. And then we are also celebrating the Amrit Kaal and we'll, in 2047, we will celebrate the 100 years of our independence and we are waiting for another Nobel Prize. I am not saying that Nobel Prize is the only criteria to judge the scientific achievements. Therefore, definitely we need science leaders or a skilled workforce for Atma Nirvar Bharat. And basic science can answer the fundamental question about the universe and lead to the diverse application, tremendous benefit for the society. Science alone cannot do anything. So it must be integrated. So therefore, I can call it, it is an integrated approach in the science and technology for sustainable future to raise the scientific awareness. Now, everybody is well known about this very important phenomenon of the Indian Science Congress, reaching the unreached through basic science, research, and technology. Whether we are talking about the agriculture or even artificial intelligence, everything we need the basic science and our prime minister always advocated the lab to land according to our prime minister of the india science is universal but technology should be local and 
I am very glad to inform you that government of India has already started many things for the science and basic science and the real self-reliance. Look at this person. He is the secretary of the Department of Science and Technology. He is basically organic chemist, Dr. Srivari Chandrasekhar. They have formulated a task force and they have identified 25 vital chemicals to be made in India. Now, another proud moment for our, us Indians that the DNA COVID vaccine was developed by our country. And more are also coming. Third important point is also that, that how India Atma Nirvarta helped deliver 100 core COVID vaccine. And again, it is an example of it is an example of integrated approach and synergistic effort of the scientists as well as the industrialists as well as the government. Another important uh, point I would like to say, be, be, being a teacher of the chemistry, that what Atma Nirvar India can do to produce the green hydrogen, because now we are talking about this renewable energy and other things, and tropical countries like India have an advantage in manufacturing the green hydrogen. That is a very burning topic, and every basic scientist are thinking how to store the hydrogen, how to use this hydrogen for the fuel energy and other things. And I'm not also talking about the national status. Now I'm talking about the international status. Many school students or college students are also attending this program. They are all aware of very simple reaction, hydrogen atom and hydrogen molecule reactions. And this gentleman, Professor Martin Karplas, who is a student of Linus Pauling, he has been studying simple bonding, bond making and bond breaking process using the basic concept. But at the age of 83, Professor Martin Karplas was awarded Nobel Prize, not for the basic science, but the application of basic science in biological system. He developed a computational model using the simple basic science, but application part is the biomolecules and protein and other things. So I should say this study is the birth of computer simulation of the chemical reactions. Now, with this theme in mind, Pandit Ravi Shankar Shukla University in 2015 established this Center for Basic Science, and it was started with a vision to search talented and skilled students for studying basic science like mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, and the ultimate objective of this study center is to promote, inspire, nurture, and fundamental of foundation science. Now, sometimes, nowadays, basic science is known as the fundamental science. And if you see, at present, there are 165 students, and they are all doing joys of the science. And if you see the faces of these young boys and girls, you can understand for doing good science, good research, the pursuit of happiness is very important, and that is there. And we have five year integrated MSc program. As you know, that there are two pillars of the basic science one is teaching, another is the research. Our subject is the teaching research oriented flexible courses. You'll be surprised to know that a mathematics student is learning biology, and a biology student is also learning mathematics. And like Iser and Nizer, as Professor Karmakar has pointed out, that the teaching methodology of also different because in order to strengthen the basic science and Atma Nirvarta, innovative and integrated teaching is also there. And in addition to physics, chemistry and biology, we also learn them, we also teach them the communication skill, English, environmental science, history of the science and other things. Ultimately, our objective is to nurture an ecosystem that promotes the research and innovation. And I'm very confident that since its inception, Center for Basic Science has been striving to develop itself into an institution of excellence in teaching and research. And if you see the popularity index, again, it is a very encouraging thing. Every year we are receiving large number of applications, but we only select 40 students. And out of 40, 20 are biology and 20 are mathematics students. Now, I must say, that 
मोबाइल डिवाइस का लगी कंप्यूटर में चलते रहते बेसिक साइंस दे आर द रियल ग्रैंड एम्बेसडर ऑफ छत्तीसगढ़ वी आर नॉट प्रोड्यूस एनी आत्मनिर्भर प्रोडक्ट बट वी आर प्रोड्यूस द आत्मनिर्भर साइंस लीडर फॉर फ्यूचर ऑफ द इंडिया एंड आवर विजन इज टू क्रिएट फ्यूचर साइंस लीडर in their chosen field we we and that is very essential for basic science and atmanirbharta for fundamental research ignition ignite ign, igniting passion for science in the young minds we generally strengthen nurture and nourish the spirit of inquisitiveness in their minds love for science and 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 i i, I must say that we have already started that journey and journey has already been started you see aram under the dynamic leadership of uh, the our present vice chancellor professor k slal varma and the vibrant teacher of this center for basic science we have started this journey and one the basic science was formative and truly indisciplinary science and really yeah, i think hmm? ha it is a transformative and truly in transdisciplinary science it's a scapular they are they are converted into atmanirbhar science leader and i i i consider that basic research is a spark that creates a new knowledge and solves big problem you know uranium is a very precious metal but unless until this reaction is initiated spark there is no reaction so such type of interaction is very essential for and i i i can call it the joy of doing the basic science for the atmanirbhar bharat just students are coming from the schools raw material when they entered this basic science and after 5 years i will just due to the short lecture i will say a few example that after 5 years they become real science soldiers and i should say it this is not information technology indian talent and it indian teacher and it india tomorrow that is atmanirbhar india and we as i already told you that uh, our basic objective is that human resource development in the science and technology identifying the talented students and other than and we always inspire our youth and help them navigate into building a progressive nation because in order to do some good basic science invention is very essential so that is called the creation of knowledge is invention and consumption of knowledge i am not saying i have taken this slogan from another the former dst secretary professor asutosh sharma is a professor because according to asutosh sharma basic research has to be less incremental and more profound because curiosity curiosity creates the creativity and creativity creates the innovation it is it is full circle of the knowledge in addition to that we need competitiveness we need the quality we need the relevance and i request all the school students and the students of uh, uh, college students they must heard the lecture of professor asutosh sharma from invention to innovation the full circle of knowledge so ultimately i can say that we develop scientific temper attitude and passion uh, for the science now i'm just lastly i'm just giving some of the example of the atmanirbhar bharat you see this young gentleman he is a physics stream student of the first batch students of uh, center for basic science and uh, he during his first semester he was studying the astronomy and astrophysics under the guidance of professor s k pandey the former vice chancellor professor narlikar and then now he is working in a very famous university that is called the leiden university of netherland 
and doing excellent work in astronomy and astrophysics. Another example is uh, Vidya Rani Singh. She was awarded large number of awards and she attended uh, Anvesan program and other things. And uh, she published large number of research paper. But the most important thing is that Vidya Rani Singh did a fundamental research, formation of ATP sensor, which is very important in the biological science for medical science. And of course, in collaboration with Bhava Atomic Research Center, and then she published some of the very good papers with this fundamental knowledge. And at present, after doing this master's, she has gone to the New York University and doing very good research. Similarly, you all know regarding the climate change is a very great problem. One of the students, soldier of Center for Basic Science, Kamran Ansari, he has done a lot of work, although he's a man of physics. But you'll be surprised to know with his fundamental knowledge, he has prepared some of the droplets. And now there is also transformation from basic science to physical research laboratory. There are so many examples, but one of the most important examples of the basic science, Mr. Heman Kumar. During these last two years, during COVID problem, all the labs have been closed, no offline teaching. See this young gentleman. Hemant Kumar. Now you can understand what is the importance of the basic science. He is a student of physics, but he has developed without any instrument. Of course, ab initio calculation and some DFT calculation. He developed, once he understands the basic science, he developed the gas sensor, material science and other things. That means with the help of his material, one can build the gas sensor. Once he understands the basic science, now he is Everybody is talking about this solar cells, renewable energy. He has also developed some of the model, studied the structural and electronic properties, organic solar cells. So a students are also doing the gas sensor. As Dr. Karmakar pointed out, out the role of diabetes, which is very important now. It is a very big problem. Now see. Students of mathematics and physics, Hemant Kumar, now he is developing some of the non essential effect of the non essential protein in degree to control the diabetes. So you can understand there is no boundary physics to and of course with the fundamental basic science. And now he is student of nine semester or ten semester. Now, he has already been selected in the Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata for diabetes. Similarly, I will not give the much more example, but I see that the large number of students are working with some Bhatnagar Award and other things. I will skip all these slides. Now, I am coming to the present work, what we are doing. Now, another example is that the creativity. In Chhattisgarhi language, it is called the Jarai. That means sprouting of innovative ideas. All these journals or magazines have been designed by the students. And this is the most important platform to nurture the student creativity, printed by the students, edited by the students, everything is by the students. Now I'm coming to what is present time, what we are doing. Now in our physics department, under the leadership of Dr. Lakshmitan Chore, now we are working on the astronomy and astrophysics. We explore galaxies which are building blocks in the universe. And what is the results of these things? Three students of the Center for Basic Science, they have been visiting the TIA for Hyderabad and discuss with the great scientists of the NASA. So you see what is the challenging part. Now similarly in chemistry also, because Chhattisgarh is well known for medicinal plants and spices. Now under the, again, I must say that this project was sanctioned by Chhattisgarh Council of Science and Technology. And Dr. Bhanushri Gupta is the principal investigator. And we have already identified large number of spices. And we have extracted the essential oil. And this essential oils are very important. They are showing the antioxidant properties, cytotoxic properties, but 
what we are interested although it is related to the cell wall destruction membrane protein but because we have chosen a basic fundamental problems that is called the societal problem that is called alzheimer disease it was observed that some of the essential oil of the spices are showing anti pollinistrious activity because one of the reason of this uh, alzheimer disease is the concentration of acetylcholine in the brain so we have to increase the concentration of so you thought that it is a medical science no it is a basic science because in order to study the interaction between this essential oil and that acetylcholine enzyme we need some materials and therefore with the help of graphene quantum dot because their properties are different so unless until we know the fundamental properties of the material science how could i develop a drugs for this so it is a societal problem similarly we prepare the microemulsion and other things i will not discuss this thing now again i am coming to the mathematics everybody thinks is mathematics mean differentiation integration matrix no now you see importance of the basic science and atma nirbharta the very young teacher of dr gobin sahu now he is working on the mathematical biology mathematical ecology you might have heard about the dr manindra agrawal of the iit kanpur who has already predicted the waves of the covid with the help of simple mathematics similarly gobin sahu with his students we are just doing the mathematical model to assess the impact of addition and even non pharmaceutical control of the strategy quarantine process last lastly man i am the biology also we are doing the under the lead of dr binu joshi plants and minerals and this level so what is important is that for doing the basic research we must have some state of art laboratory i am really grateful to the rashtriya uchchatar shiksha abhiyan government of chatisgarh as well as the university grant commission we have got very good grants and you will be very happy to know i request all the participants and the distinguished scientists do visit the lab of center for basic science now what is important that if you see lab, the teacher dr lakshmi kan that we have planned some of the experiment which are nobel prize experiment everybody is aware of the jiman effect but unless until they know the fundamentals of the jiman effect peter jiman similarly we have millikan oil drop method everybody is know the electrical charge carried by an electron so once a student perform this simple experiment he can learn the what is millikan oil drop method similarly max planck everybody knows about the planck constant whether it is a physics chemistry or biology so we perform such type of experiment with the help of students and superconductivity and other thing so you can understand that we have giving the basic knowledge for the students and generate curiosity within them in addition to that in order to do some basic science and product we do large number of mou with the different institution from local 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 for vocal so rungta institute of college not only that we have a pandit ravi shankar sukla university with mou with the iit bilai and you will be very happy to know that many students of center for basic science do visit the iit bilai physics department and they deliver lecture before the scientist to interact with subset and several professor of the iit bilai they visit to our places similarly you know this great man now the secretary of the department of science and technology dr s sivari chandrasekhar he visited our place and sign a mu when he was a director of iict hyderabad and still we are in touch with dr chandrasekhar for some work in the medicinal plant in addition to that we do lot of work on school visit i have already discussed this thing i will not 
discuss this thing. That means you see the CBS reaching out to the schools with models, with importance of the basic science. How do we study the basic science and other things? This is the various school of Chhattisgarh, various colleges of the Chhattisgarh, and we also invite the eminent scientists like Professor CNR Rao and from some foreign scientists and other things in order to get this exposure and other things. And uh, our we also invite we organize large number of National Science Day, National Mathematics Day. With the of course. Again, I'm grateful to Chhattisgarh Council of Science and Technology for giving the funds for us. And lastly, uh, it is a, uh, we also hold some industry to teach students what are of things. And our uh, campaign and green and digital campus in order to, they are not only studying the basic science, but they are also doing good thing for the plantation and other things everything is there so lastly uh, i must say that in summary we are not producing any any product atma nirbhar product but we actually produce the atma nirbhar science soldier for the future of the india who can do the best work and still there are certain great problems we are facing. And I hope that with the help of basic science, India can become Atmanirbhar in the case of water conservation activities and water saving. Green energy and promoting the carbon neutrality. Stopping climate threatening and action. Reducing pollution emission. And of course, the Basic science can solve this problem and Chhattisgarh, I must say, and we must be proud of these things that Chhattisgarh is leading the way in conserving water under the scientific methods to ensure the groundwater retention under the leadership of our Honorable Chief Minister Sri Bhupesh Baghel. But of course, a holistic approach to excellence needs to be developed and innovative strategies and persistent challenges are there. And I should say, I will not discuss because it's a short lecture. Now it's a need of both growth, horizontal as well as the vertical integration. It is called the spiral integration. So I must say that science education must be strengthened. And as uh, I request the young students of the Chhattisgarh, we are also doing some work in the Narva Garva Gurva Vari Yojana. So, Last, that basic science is a, it is a marathon, I should say. It is not a sprint that it is a marathon. It's a, of course, basic science is a powerful, but it takes time to develop. It is not possible that within five years we, we, we develop some. Uh, some things. So thank you very much for patient hearing. And uh, I'm really grateful to the university authority, particularly our vice chancellor, our registrar, and the faculty members for giving me this, uh, all the output. And really, I have no words to express my deep sense of gratitude to Director General, the Council of Science and Technology, Dr. S. Tarmakar and Dr. Vasim Raja for giving me this golden opportunity to discuss some of the salient features of the basic science. Thank you very much. Due to, I'm very sorry due to certain technical problem. There are some problems. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is the faculty members of the basic science. They are the pillar of this center. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, for your uh, detailed uh, lecture on promotion of excellence in basic science and what is the role of Pandit Ravi Shankar Shukla University in that. Uh, being an alumni of the same university, I feel very proud that uh, thank you, thank you. 
we are we are not only striving ahead we are rather ahead of, uh, ahead from what was expected from us far far ahead from that we are you know uh, in a sense uh, sort of leaders in this sector especially in the areas of basic sciences and uh, i have seen the laboratory and i have seen the infrastructure available i can i can vouch on that that, that is one of the best possible in the zone so thank you thank you so very kind of you to accept our invitation and uh, uh, give us a very nice glimpse of the university as well as the department and the work being carried out in the field of basic sciences so thank you so much now we move upon to the second part of the program wherein uh, i i am i am uh, going to introduce dr govardhan bhat uh, who is basically assistant professor in national institute of technology raipur Uh, he has done his phd from iit roorkee he is holding many administrative positions in uh, national institute of technology raipur as an mtech coordinator for structural engineering uh, professor in charge for sponsored research projects nss dramatic clubs uh, hockey and coordinator for student activities uh, for chatisgarh council of science and technology as well Uh, he is having more than 10 years of teaching and research experience in the field of earthquake engineering structural dynamics vibration and seismic uh, base isolation uh, rc frame structures his area of expertise include structural designs geotechnical earthquake engineering modeling vedic studies and so on and so forth he has published more than 45 research papers uh, in national and international journals Uh, his he has uh, he is rather working on various pro projects from esteemed institutions like unicef bihar state disaster management authority institution of engineers and also from chatisgarh council of science and technology so welcome uh, dr bhat uh, over to you for your presentation on role of basic sciences in atmanirbharta over to you sir thank you thank you very much sir thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity i i'd like to uh, uh, give the thanks to uh, dg sir uh, akhilesh tripathi sir and wasim sir for giving me this opportunity to express uh, the things so uh, already i think uh, sir has uh, go sir has uh, informed everything but still uh, some of the things uh, which i can contribute i will explain uh, actually uh, sir has included all the things but still uh, i will i will uh, uh, go with my presentation uh, so uh, i think my screen is visible yes sir it is visible okay sir okay please make it to the uh, presentation so, mode sir please make your yes, slide yes 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 sir thank yes, sir. you yes sir okay so uh, i'll be i'll be discussing uh, role of basic sciences in atmanirbharta because uh, uh, eminent uh, uh, speakers also there uh, in science and uh, technology i think next speaker is uh, our respected ambade sir so he is uh, having more knowledge uh, whatever uh, uh, the knowledge he is having uh, i am having only 1% of his knowledge so i'll be telling very less because i want to listen to sir only uh so i will be dealing uh, some of the important things of the uh, basic sciences and uh, how can atmanirbharta can be achieved with the help of uh, basic sciences so uh, basically as already sir said kalol gosh sir said science has led to numerous inventions and technological advancements in uh, different sectors of the nation okay the basic thing uh, if you see the agricultural sector actually i was discussing with akhilesh tripathi sir all the time uh, in ccos uh, related to the agricultural sector which has developed like anything and agri agricultural sector has gifted with uh, enormous uh, tools and uh, machines okay uh, uh, which uh, uh, fr from initial to this stage now nowadays it is a drone drone which is coming into the agricultural sector also so the practice of science if you speak of Uh, uh, uh education has been increasingly informed by research into science and te uh, science teaching and learning basically the science is which is very important when when students come to nit raipur they teach chemistry uh, we teach chemistry physics mathematics uh, as a basic tools basic tools for the students 
so uh, science education research aims to define characterize what constitute learning in science and how it is brought about so what are the efforts to uh, strengthen the foundation of every uh, student is taken care of uh, to make uh, uh, them to ready in solving the real life problems that is very important so engineering if we speak of a technology or usually we speak of in terms of development as a stream of study then demands all the basic knowledge of the physics chemistry mathematics in in all the all the perspectives okay i am ignoring these streams can never make a perfect thing so that is why in engineering uh, 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 colleges or the uh, technical institutions they teach basic physics basic chemistry and uh, mathematics up to the uh, fourth semester level so and other important thing is a uh, basic science and humanities uh, we uh, we as nit raipur and other all technical institutions iit roorkee and all other technical institutions they have a separate department for social sciences and humanities so the basic thing is that basically support efficiently uh, the engineering department by providing the quality training to the students uh, with the morals ethics and other things so let us start with the mathematics mathematics i i as iitn treat mathematics as the queen of sciences is the basics uh, basics for all the branches of science engineering and technology as sir said uh, uh, about uh, uh, dr govin sahu ji uh, uh, who has mathematized the uh, biological science so that is the basic uh, thing which is very important any complex idea that can be logically expressed by equation and formula and mathematics it itself is a language through which difficult problems can be addressed Uh, um, uh, if we if we speak of our ancient uh, 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 texts like Vedas, Vedas are basically they are coding languages, algorithms. They are basically uh, they are in terms of mathematics only. When we speak of physics, physics uh, or education is basically uh, very important and my favorite subject. Physics education is characterized by the study of science that deals with the matter and energy. with their interactions and their interactions and uh, if we if we speak of uh, uh, einstein's theory of relativity or any other neil bohr's or whatever you, you you think of the recent science is is on at the level of modern modern physics which is very important and nowadays we people are uh, speaking about the other universe Uh, other 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 uh, 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 sci other ma uh, other uh, you know satellite uh, and other important things in 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 uh, uh, physics so the basic thing is uh, physics uh, experiments uh, help students in understanding the nature of science very importantly uh, every everyone should understand the nature of science so chemistry is uh, education that is characterized by the study of science that deals with the composition of the structure uh, properties and substances usually as a civil engineer when i when i do the hydration analysis of cement i usually go what are the chemical reactions which are happening in the uh, uh, that cement or the structure or the concrete that is very important for uh for everyone who is working on the nowadays we are speaking about the nano materials and nano science so there we are thinking about the chemistry in in a large perspective so uh, the very important is knowledge of chemistry and chemical reaction is required in design and sub subsequent production of such power uh, uh whatever the uh, uh, mostly combustion engine or if we speak of a different type of cement or different type of Uh, uh materials so chemistry is very important biology is uh, very important and the study of structure function heredity evolution all living organisms i am not a uh, uh, expert of this uh, so i will not go uh, much into this so what you actually understood about the atmanirbharta specifically the students students you should understand that Uh, the aim is to make the country and its citizen independent and self-reliant in all senses. 
ओके सो मोदी जी द प्रधानमंत्री फर्दर आउटलाइन फाइव पिलर्स ऑफ आत्मनिर्भर भारत इकोनॉमी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सिस्टम वाइब्रेंट डेमोग्राफी एंड डिमांड सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड ऑल द थिंग्स सो द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज द वे टू गेट स्टार्टेड इज टू क्विट टॉकिंग एंड बिगिन डूइंग so what we are uh, now uh, we were speaking uh, previously uh, before atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan or something like that nowadays we are into the second stage that we are doing all the things so there is a uh, study which was done in us for the school students specifically and school and uh, uh, secondary uh, level students that is 11th and 12th students they have done a study and they have discovered a new approach that is called as a guided discovered approach which 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 actually makes a student innovative in terms of actually sir kalur go sir said about the innovation which is a important thing knowledge with uh, invention and uh, that a guided uh, thing so that is very important in case of uh, 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 the students education so along with john dewe and jerome bruner and many others uh, and they have uh, uh, proposed a uh, uh, contemporary and uh, normal uh, science education in into a guided discovery approach what that actually was about so to, uh, to derive a pleasure from the art of discovery as uh, from the other arts the consumer uh, in this case as student must be made to relive to some extent to uh, the creative process so in other words a uh, student must be induced with the proper aid and guidance to make some of the fundamental discoveries of science by himself and to experience in his own mind some of those flashes of insight which have uh, lightened its path it's very important not only the not only making the student to discover something but also making something uh, you know that can be uh, make into a invention level so the traditional method of confronting the student not with the problem but with the finished solutions meaning uh, we have we have for example uh, we have already made a procedure in chemistry and we know that uh, that color comes to a pink or some titration processes are there that may make some color or some some we know the output but in this case guided discovery approach we are only guiding and the student will decide which will be the outcome at the level of uh, 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 that adventure type of uh, uh, thing will be there in this guided discovery approach so what are all the part of this guided discovery approach the first thing is research and self reliance so the practice of science education basically increasing uh, informed by research into science teaching and learning so research in science education relies on a wide variety of methodologies borrowed from many branches of science uh, and engineering so here uh, uh, the important thing is define or characterize what constitutes learning in science how and how it is brought about so there are three important points which are to be understood so first thing is preconception second in uh, is knowledge organization and third one is a metacognition so prior ideas about how things work are remarkably tenacious and an educator must explicitly address the students specific misconceptions if the student is to reconfigure his misconception in favor of another explanation so therefore it is essential that educators know how to learn about the student preconceptions and make this as a regular part of usually the student uh, mind is very very you know uh, 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 something like uh, flickering or something like there it is just like a wave of uh, ocean so that preconception should be you know removed from the misconception should be removed and there should be a preconception into the student's mind second one is a knowledge organization it has three steps first thing is have a deep foundation of factual knowledge 
it's it's not like whatsapp knowledge okay or facebook knowledge it's a something uh, uh, it's a research oriented factual knowledge and second one is a uh, understand facts and ideas in that construct context and conceptual framework it's also a very important and the third important thing is uh, organize knowledge in a way that facilitate retrieval and application that goes to the invention level or innovation level the third important part is metacognition it's a very important part where student will benefit from thinking about their thinking and their learning also parallelly we usually call that as a teaching learning process will be happening there are some algorithm tlbu algorithm teaching learning based algorithms are there so there we uh, we uh, teach and as well as we learn parallelly so i usually i approach that uh, method of uh, uh, teaching because i usually uh, uh, give the lectures every year i change my book i read another new book and i i teach them so that is what uh, the, the third metacognition level and the very important thing is they must be taught ways of evaluating their knowledge it is not we uh, evaluate their knowledge with the help of that answer sheets or marks or something like that it is we have to give them a, a process for uh, evaluating their own knowledge and what they don't know okay it's very important and evaluating evaluating their methods of thinking also or evaluating their consciousness also is very important so some educators and others have practiced and advocated for discussions of pseudo science as a way to understand what it is to think scientifically and to address the problems introduced by pseudo science basically the student will be the teacher while is while is studying very important thing okay so we'll come into the uh, developments in in agricultural sector there are new farming practices that have been established nowadays uh, the drone uh, practicing is also uh, existing uh, uh, in india the scope of uh, trade will also nowadays uh, the central government uh, government of india is more focused on agricultural sector for the economic development of india so they are they are doing very much better in 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 agricultural sectors so medical sector as you all know that covid 19 and uh, the india is the one who has developed uh, two uh, basic uh, uh, vaccines for all over the uh, world okay so almost uh, that's a great uh, uh, reach of uh, india where, um, uh, for atmanirbhar bharat and the uh, instrumentation sector i i know that uh, few of my students uh, uh, from nit raipur they have developed their own uh, uh, this uh, 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 vac uh, vaccination uh, 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 treating or something like uh, you know uh, that uh, um, uh, hand wash and other other techno uh, technological uh, 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 instruments with very 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 less cost Uh, within ten thousand or fifteen thousand, they have developed that uh, uh, sanitizers, all all type of instruments in our uh, institutions. So that is the instrumentation sector we are we are in uh, development. So uh, these instruments in IT Roorkee, they have developed that uh, 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 very low cost uh, 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 oxygen uh, uh, ventilators. So there there are big things. Uh, which are uh, now into the development of uh, atmanirbhar bharat uh, as you speak of recently iit madras has uh, developed uh, 5g technology and it is under it is under uh, process so uh, they are they are doing uh, communication sector like anything the development in communication uh, is is nowadays up to 5g level they they have uh, done a great job so this has helped in conveying uh, uh, messages anywhere in india because we can see that jio uh, which was there that developed a, a very easy uh, 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 recharge plans 
so uh, everyone is doing free message free whatsapps and all those things uh, nowadays development of communication is also at the peak level so industry uh, uh, msme and other other uh, sectors are giving um, uh, as even c cost also helping for uh, small level startups for uh, industries so there are many things uh, india before independence was lacking in industrial development after independence there was a great innovation in the industrial sectors so nowadays industrial sector is too high in india also so you can see that uh, uh, there are uh, handicraft business and uh, mills and other sectors have developed like anything and we are now exporting the things all over the world so make in india and uh, atmanirbhar bharat if we speak of we have a lion which is roaring all over the world uh, uh, that lion is saying that india is now making and uh, making progress and in, in in different sectors and this has been made possible due to the contribution of science and technology of india and we have great science in in uh, uh, defense sectors or whatever the sector we choose uh, we have a great development in that sectors so summary the basic thing is the standard call for more than science as a process in which students learn such skills as observing inferring and experimenting the basic thing is inquiry is a central to science learning that we understood by even kalol sir's lecture also when engaging in inquiry student describe objects and events ask questions construct explanations and test those explanation against the current scientific knowledge and communicate their ideas to others it is the process that has to happen so by which they identify their ideas to others and uh, assumptions they identify their assumptions use critical and logical thinking and consider alternative explanation and in this way student uh, actively develop their understanding of science by combining scientific knowledge with uh, reasoning and thinking uh, skills so with this uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity thank you uh, uh, dubey sir thank you akhilesh sir and thank you wasim sir thank you karmakar sir thank you very much sir thank you uh... thank you uh, so very kind of you dr govardhan bhat for uh, your you know short and concise uh, lecture on uh, what nit is doing and what other iits and engineering institutions are doing in 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 the field of basic sciences uh, i i also thank you on behalf of council of science and technology for accepting our invitation and also being a part and parcel of council of science and technology as a coordinator for extension of our activities to uh, students in these sectors so very kind of you so uh, now we move upon to the third uh, special guest lecture uh, which is which is on the topic of self reliance in development of snt in ancient bharat and uh, the 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 august person whom i i'm i'm going to introduce is well known to everybody and rather you know very fondly known to me as well because he has been our director general for about 8 years professor m m hambade Uh, uh, he 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 has done his uh, B Arc from V R C Nagpur in 1970. He has done his uh, M Arc from I I T Roorkee in 1972. He has uh, his his research has been uh, on the topic of energy conservation in architecture. He has been practicing architecture uh, since then. He has been a lecturer and assistant professor in Maulana Azad. Uh, uh college of technology which is presently now manit that is maulana azad national institute of technology bhopal for about 15 years he has been professor and head of the department of architecture at national institute of technology raipur for 30 years he has designed and supervised several buildings in raj bhavan vidhan sabha and R ravi shankar university under consultancy cell of uh, nit he has been the director for nit for a period of time as well he has been director general chatisgarh council of science and technology raipur for 8 years and in his leadership the council opened its vistas in various sectors especially in the areas of basic sciences and others 
his interests are in history particularly ancient history ancient bharat history bharati classical music literature poetry apart from being an uh, architect of natural uh, national repute i i would without further ado i would like to call upon professor m m hambarde sir for his lecture on self reliance in development of science and technology in ancient bharat over to you uh, sir sir you have to unmute yourself sir please unmute yourself okay 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 i have to let yes thank sir. you very much for everybody in this uh, meeting the core um, uh, just to excuse me ha uh, hello to everyone and uh, for a long time uh, and again on the stage somehow um, and then the topic which was given to me uh, was uh, not atmanirbharta on the basis of science basic science but atmanirbharta self reliance in the field of as development of science and technology uh, in ancient india particularly now when we want to become atmanirbhar there are three stages before that one is self recognition atmaparichay then atmagaurav self pride and then that leads to atmanirbharta the the current scenario are a little bit changing very fast but then till now it was generally a notion that the science came to india from west and uh, we are just uh, following them developing a little bit and that's all but then unless we are self pride having that self pride uh, like uh, uh, dr cv raman sir cv raman in 1949 when he was addressing the students in um, uh, in some science college then he said boys when we import we not only pay for our ignorance but we also pay for our incompetence so everything coming from outside which is not atmanirbharta it is paranirbharta this was the scenario in the development of in the in the development of science and technology both technology is still prevailing uh, since about Eight years here before, uh, the things are changing, and the slogan given by our beloved Prime Minister, Atman Irvarta, uh, "Vocal for Local," "Make in India," uh, all those slogans and the policy accordingly um, is leading us to Atman Irvar. Even with this feeling of self pride. how can we go ahead the acharya prafulla sin rahe also uh, addressed in madras uh, uh, in the in the program of uh, hindu rasayan shastra in 1918 he said we are very much proud of our ancient contribution to the science of chemistry i am equally proud of all the branches of science that grew 
in ancient India. Now, out of ignorance or out of a uh, little uh, exposure um, uh, to the students and the new generation, they only know that everything has come to India, mostly with the Britishers, uh, the British rule. And there, after we started, in science and technology, even Jagdish Chandra Bose, when he invented those sparks in the house, he said, when I experienced and saw that sparks are, in a real sense, understood the meaning of the mantras chanted by my forefathers 3,000 years before on the river of Ganga. That sort of, sort of self-pride, once it is there, the things I am quoting are all pre-independence things. Though we were not independent in British rule, but Indian scientists, only because of self-pride, grew, go, went ahead and uh, won Nobel Prize. After independence, I'm sorry to say, and everybody should be sorry to realize that we could not uh, get any worthwhile or Nobel Prize or any other worthwhile prize in the field of science. Uh, though Indians did it, but then they were outside India. So, Dr. Khurana and things like that. Now, this self pride, unless it is there, comes from the knowledge, the information. Unless we know what our forefathers were, what they did, they did in the field of science and technology. The self-pride cannot come. And so self-confidence also does not come. But tragically, it is so that even today, the world believes that India, Bharat, was uh, very much developed in the field of spiritualism, in the field of values, in the field of dharma, in the field of spiritualism and many more things. But when it comes to science and technology, nothing, no contribution. That is a general notion. In ancient, I say ancient, it is before the aggression of foreigners who were Islam by religion. Before that. But then we do not know anything about science and technology. That, uh, when we say something, uh, people say that, all right, we are talking about ourselves. But then, uh, Albert Einstein, he said, we owe a lot to the Indians who taught us how to count without which no worthwhile scientific, um, scientific discovery would have been made. In many, um, like uh, Julius Oppenheimer said, what we shall find in modern physics is an exemplification and encouragement and a refinement of old Hindu wisdom. I'm quoting these people basically because, uh, in general, uh, people say if somebody from West, uh, some scholar from the West says something, it is uh, worthwhile, it is believable. Uh, if Indians say something, then uh, it is self-praise uh, self only. Like Jean Sylvain Beverly, he said uh, regarding uh, astrology, the motion of the stars calculated by the Hindus before some 4,500 years vary not even a single minute from the modern tables and Cassini, uh, uh, tables of Cassini and Mayer. So these are sort of certifications. Um, Jack Salfetti, uh, a North American 
theoretical physics say, I suspect that general relativity and quantum theory are two complementary aspects of a deeper theory that will involve a kind of cons cosmic consciousness. The cosmic consciousness comes from Sankhya Darshan of India. So, not only <coughs> in the field of science, I have a little bit made a survey in Sanskrit Mahavidyalaya of Sanskrit literature. I have found about 40% of Sanskrit literature is basically and purely on the science. Other things like Ved, Upanishad, Darshan, Shastra, Ramayana, Mahabharat, Kalidas, Bhavuti, and all those things. But then 40% is on science purely. Like Yukti Sarvaswa, Yukti Kalpataru, Yantra Sarvaswa, Samarangan Sutradhar, and many other books, and uh, all, only science, no puja but no bhakti, nothing, only on science. Like we have our textbooks in chemistry, physics, etc. They are almost the textbooks on various field of science. Now, just to <coughs> mention some more things in the field of field of development of science and technology, a particular science, like in astronomy, Surya Siddhanta says, Yojanani Shatan Nashtam Bhukarano Dvigunani too. The meaning is, the radius of the Earth is 800 yojans. Multiply this by 2. Take the square of that and multiply by 10. The square root of the figure obtained is the circumference of the Earth. Roughly 5,060 yojan and one yojan is 8,000 So to an extent, without telescope, without the, the modern um, uh, instruments and implementations, uh, God knows how they could have developed it. It is not only basic science, but also like uh, mechanisms, machines. In Yantya Sarvaswam, uh, there is a introductory slope like you said system of generation of energy through motion or continuous rotation of shaft wheels or wedges is called a machine even the machine is defined it says it is a mechanism that converts one energy from one form to another form many more such quotations um, are there I got a presentation of, on this subject, but it is very long. It contains about 120 slides. So I am not uh, uh, explaining to that extent. Uh, like mathematics, it was said again and again. So the uh, mathematics uh, in Aryavartyam, it has a formula to work out square and cube roots. It has numbers. Um, even the numbers which are written now, uh, the Shunya is most talked about, like uh, theorem of Pythagoras. Everybody knows it is Pythagoras theorem. Thousands and thousand years before Pythagoras, the Bodhayan Sutra, which is called Shunya Sutra, in the Atharvaveda, says the Pythagoras theorem has its origin in the Shunya Sutra of Bodhayan and Apastamba, the area of the squares produced separately by the length and breadth of a rectangle together equals the area produced by the diagonal. That AC square is equal to AB square plus BC square as known to you. Area of triangle, the various trigonometrical formulae, the value of pi, it was invented to the uh, a decimal 31 numbers. The slope is Gobi, Bhagya, Bhadruvat. I don't quote it complete, but then that slope, if uncoded, it gives us the value of pi up to 31 place of decimals. And many more things like 
um, we have talked about um, agriculture or any other field. It is always uh, mostly said that in India, uh, we only uh, talked about little theoretical and experimental science did not develop. But no, Yashodhar, the, uh, the author of one book on chemistry, uh, says, Svahastena Kutam Samyak Jaranananda Shrutam Maya. All these things I have not only learned from Guru. Not only that I have read it in the books, not that I have heard about them. I have done those experiments with my own hands. After doing and getting conclusions only, I could, I did uh, put this theorem or Siddhanta to be proved. So, such many more things like uh, agriculture. Uh, there is a book which is called Parasha Vriksha Ayurved. Also one book, Upavana Vinod. So all those books which are in Sanskrit, but their translation uh, in English as well as in Hindi of some books are available. The gist of the topic is <coughs> that we did not import. We developed our own, rather exported our science to um, uh, various, um, uh, uh, various areas in the world. It is suspected a lot that the principle of gravitation, which goes on the name of Newton, it is very much explained, not only as a formula, but explained in Vaisheshik Darshan by um, uh, Patanjali. So the, uh, not Patanjali, I'm sorry, I'm getting a name, but then the Vaisheshik Shastra. This term Vaisheshik also means Vigya. V is common, Visheshagya is Vigya. Uh, Visheshvastumaka Visheshagya is Vigya. Similarly, Vaisheshik is the, is the Darshan uh, about uh, uh, atom to the entire phys physical and chemical properties of various matters and uh, that of energy. Agastya Sahita talks about generation of electricity with a sort of experiment. Experiment was done in VRC Nagpur very practically, very successfully. All these things, when they come to our knowledge, we are filled with as self-confidence, self-pride, and go ahead with one particular sentiment and inspiration that we must not import and develop our own. We must be Atma Nirvar in the development of science. As such, it is believed by all. In, in other way around, if I speak, that the development of science and technology makes us Atma Nirvar. But only that suitable, appropriate science and appropriate technology, like the technology of India, by India, for India, and by Indians, in such a development of science and technology only will make us Atmanirvan, self-reliant. If we go on importing, and as we, it is happening, many more, many numerous technologies uh, which are coming to India, we are adopting it uh, merely because it is possible. They are working. So whether they are really needed at the root of the society, economically as well as socially, or um, from efficiency, of the work to be done. The mechanisms, the mechanical engineering, as described in particularly 
युक्ति का सर्वस्वम बेसिकली सेस दैट द मशीन शुड बी सच दैट दे शुड बी ऑपरेबल मैन्युअली इफ दे आर नॉट ऑपरेबल मैन्युअली मैन्युअली एंड गो टू ऑटोमेशन देन इट विल जनरेट अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट at a very large extent and we have experienced that even uh, foreign countries like america is ex uh, experiencing this particular problem that automation is very good in some field like space or in some field of um, uh, developed technology automation is needed but it if it comes to a very low level everything with a remote control and the remote control also is operable uh, manually the automated remote control um, in artificial intelligence uh, with that everything is operable so that generates unemployment and that's why yanta sarvasam says that the machine is to enhance the working efficiency of a man he can do the job he has to do the job he can do it in a better manner more efficiently in less time with a larger um, productivity so that is one um, lesson from ancient um, uh, indian science and technology that it was self reliant uh, in itself and it also developed in a such a ma manner that it made the entire society self reliable one more reason uh, why ancient or even historical even today the development of science and technology um, has generated atmanirbharta because of development of folk science and technology the it might be so in other parts of the world but in india it has been seen from ancient times there were no laboratories research laboratories there were few our rishi muni like kanad or bharadwaj they <clears throat> were having their ashram in foreign uh, in the forest and were exerting a lot thinking a lot doing experiments observation etc logic and developing science scientific uh, knowledge but not only that every person in the village and particularly in the forest where no resources were available it was encouraged and everybody was developing science and technology on the basis of his own uh, observations on the on the basis of his own experimentation developing developing it further and further that folk developed technology was so rich in india uncomparable to any part of it like metallurgy now uh, in uh, a uh, kerala malabar area in bastar in um, um, forest area in madhya pradesh and everywhere people develop the skill by themselves we do not find any laboratories in the scientists in the technologists developing uh, such schemes the folk developed it right from exploring the ores extracting the metal developing the metal um, and making various implements and tools for agriculture for daily use out of that the 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 iron which does not rust who developed that the people so that is one aspect when we say that indian society was a self reliant atmanirbhar in the development of science and technology also and that further 
and the example of such a folk technology development is the iron pillar in that kutub complex in delhi unparalleled we do not find a uh, name of any any technologist in the history or any books that somebody some scholar some technologist developed it god knows who has developed it it comes from the folk the entire technology and scientific um, observations in forestry in horticulture in agriculture was on the basis of folk only their own observations experimentations further improvisations and passing from one generation to another generation to make everybody uh, the entire society generations after generations self self reliant so now when we say uh, atmanirbhar bharat of course it has a different concept um it is i'm not saying that um, uh, we have to go for all things in the ancient times only uh, for some reasons uh, there was a discontinuity of development of the science and technology of india and so there were after a gap we again came up but then as the previous speakers were trying to impress upon that the things are coming up the mentality uh, is growing that we have to work ourselves the young generation is exerting a lot but they have to exert um, further a lot and the aim should be we so we, we should be to ourselves as such atmanirbhar self dependent only only is not, not a very good thing or on a global level or on the individual level <coughs> uh the परस्पर आत्मनिर्भरता परस्पर निर्भरता इज वेरी गुड सो वी वी गिव एंड टेक वी अडॉप्ट द टेक्नोलॉजी एंड साइंस फ्रॉम अदर कंट्रीज वेन वी से आत्मनिर्भर डज नॉट मीन वी डू नॉट वी डू नॉट लर्न एनीथिंग फ्रॉम अदर्स एंड वी आर लॉक्ट लाइक लाइक कुक मंडूक नो वी मस्ट टेक वी मस्ट गिव ऑल आनो भद्रा कतो विश्वतः लेट ऑल गुड थिंग्स कम टू अस फ्रॉम द यूनिवर्स दैट इज आल्सो मेंटेटिव बट वी शुड नॉट बी डिपेंडेंट ऑन दैट दैट इफ वी कैन नॉट गेट एनीथिंग फ्रॉम आउटसाइड देन वी आर हैंडीकैप नो सो वी शुड बी सेल्फ कॉन्फिडेंट टू डेवलप आवर सेल्फ्स एंड बिकम आत्मनिर्भर not only self reliant but self dependent and um, also help others to grow the idea basic idea of growth of india that we grow we become better we become mighty the idea is with this mightiness we make the world the universe a better world we become better we become atmanirbhar and that knowledge a uh, stock of knowledge is distributed to uh, all the world with the with the idea of vasudeva kutumbakam so this atmanirbhar nirbharta is not uh, is not a narrow mindedness and so with the given tech but on ourselves uh, we particularly new generation also should uh, exert uh, they should perspire they should aspire both so aspiration does not come without perspiration so with this uh, they must go ahead but again i come down to the point zero and will conclude that while doing so they must look back to some extent try to see what happened in india in ancient bharat 
I'm, I'm sorry to that Kalor Ghosh sir is there, but then there was some seminar in Department of Chemistry in Ravi Shankar Vishwavidyalaya, and it was the day of um, Jayanti of Prafulla Chandra Ray, and the organization uh, which was basically patronized by society, funded by Acharya Prafulla Chandra Ray, uh, was financed it. So my wish was that somebody should speak about uh, Acharya Prabhupada Sundar Ray and his a great book named as, titled as History of Hindu Chemistry. So chemistry is also Hindu. It is not only the people, but the chemistry of the Hindu. That means the chemistry developed by Hindu people. Hindu means ancient people in India. It's a great book in two volumes. I'm sorry to say that. When the Department of Chemistry, students and teachers and professors, nobody even have, had seen the book. Uh, they knew about the Prabhupada Ray, but his contribution was not known much. So I was given the task to introduce that book to the audience. I did it um, to the extent, um, extent of my ignorance, but then I did it. I could do it. So this is one example. That our uh, sign up the, the scholars and research workers at least visit once and see what is there. It is a treasure of knowledge. You, you, they are eye openers. Never thought, you will never, would have never thought that we had such a stock of knowledge with us in the basic science also. Uh, in the field of technology, is later on. So this is the only uh, sort of, um, you can say, message uh, I wanted to uh, give, taking the opportunity of um, this invitation. Uh, I am thankful to Mr. Rao, who, um, who interacted with me and asked me, um, rather um, insisted very much uh, on me that I should uh, come here and speak few words. I did not, made, did not make any presentation. Uh, I am a habit of uh, speaking extempore everywhere. Whatsoever is here, I speak out. Uh, I did not prepare it to, uh, as such. Uh, but then I think uh, whatsoever the point I raised uh, regarding development of science, basic science also, and uh, self-reliance, Atman Nirvarta, in development of science and Atman Nirvarta as a result of development of science. Uh, both things, I think I, I made some justice in my deliberation and uh, uh, at the end, I must thank SICOST uh, and the organizers of this, uh, I should say, webinar and to invite, it, to invite me. And though I am not basically um, by definition, a scientist. Uh, but uh, I have got some reading, some study I have done, um, particularly of ancient books. I have got uh, some books like um, uh, this Bharat um, Vigyan Ki Param Ujwal Parampara, Science in Sanskrit, and many more books. Um, uh, uh, some scientific uh, articles by Swami Vivekananda and um, scholars of the world talking about science of India, great minds on India, and many more books on the basis of the study and reading. What should I do? I have some uh, uh, some thoughts and uh, something to say. Tell you all people, and you give me chance to say it. I am very much thankful to all of you, and basically, see cost very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Your words of wisdom have been guiding us for quite some time and uh, we definitely uh, you know, we, we treat you as more of a scientist rather than uh, 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 being a proliferous reader. Absolutely one of the benchmarks which any every scientist has. So thank you for accepting our invitation and gracing the occasion and enlightening us on the various aspects of, uh, you know, ancient science, which which was there with us. And we should be proud about that and we should feel pride 
uh, in our rich and uh, vibrant history, even in the field of science and technology. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation. So very kind of you for gracing the occasion. So uh, now the 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 uh, we, we we are we are reaching towards the uh, last leg of our program, and in this, I would like to call upon uh, Dr. R. K. Bajpayee, sir, who has been uh, you know Professor Soil Sciences uh, in uh, Indira Gandhi Agriculture University, has been Director of Research, Director Extension of Indira Gandhi Agriculture University, has an uh, uh, you know. Uh, experience of more than 20 years more than 25 30 years his academic qualifications is basically he's a doctorate in uh, soil sciences he has held several key position in indira gandhi agriculture university under his tenure 18 varieties of uh, various crops have been released for the state uh, of chhattisgarh including varieties of rice against malnutrition high oil containing uh, safflower during uh, his tenure as director of research, he has been member administrative and academic council of Indira Gandhi Ekeshwar Raipur. He has served as referees to uh, review ad hoc projects in uh, in our institution, that is as Chhattisgarh Council of Science and Technology. He has he is a member of CG certification uh, and reviewer of research journals. He has demonstrated low cost input technologies for improving the livelihood improvement of farmers of entire state through R and D. And FLDs and various other schemes. He has handled several international uh, projects as, as well as national and regional projects. He has published more than 1990 publications and guided more than 40 PhD students and 85 P P PG uh, scholars to conduct their research in field of soil nutrient, plant water relations, and so on and so forth. His biodata is quite extensive and is uh, you know, beyond the purview of me to introduce uh, introduce him. Uh, in, so, without any further delay, I would I would I would request Professor Bajpai to take over and and go on with his presentation in on the topic new trends in organic farming. Over to you, Bajpai, sir. Uh, I'm sorry. One one moment. Uh, I have some other engagement. Uh, may I get permission to leave the meeting, sir? Please, 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 sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. What do you buy, please, sir? Okay, good afternoon, Dr. Dubey, sir, and all the respected member of Chhattisgarh uh, Council of Science and Technology. As Dr. Dubey has already introduced and the talk about the topic also, so I just wanted to tell you that uh, today. I am going to deliver one lecture on the new trends in organic agriculture. So, are whether my presentation is visible or not, Dr. Dubey? Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay. Thank you. So, as the topic to, uh, we have already, uh, in the from morning we are listening that how to make uh, India Atma Nirbhar. In this context, in, in terms of the agriculture, I am just delivering some points, you know, new trends in organic farming through which we can be Atma Nirbhar in food production. So, as we all know that the agriculture is the backbone of India and <laughs> Uh, our traditional farming system was, we can say that that was the organic uh, agriculture. And because of the population, uh, we can say we have to switch the population bombardment only. I can say India has to switch for this uh, fertilizer or uh, chemical farming. And because of the introduction of the chemicals, uh, chemical uh, means, uh, means uh, fertilizers and hiking variety because the new hiding variety are more responsive to the uh, fertilizer because of this actually we have shifted from traditional farming to the uh, chemical farming and in this chemical farming uh, we started this uh, utilizing the different fertilizers so in the era of 1970s we can say that that was the uh, actually green revolution era in agriculture of india 
and after getting the sufficiency in agriculture or we can say that we are now self sufficient in food production again we are thinking of the production of uh, organic or we can say cultivation of organic agriculture so i am just going before because of this some of, of the members may not be knowing what is actually the army farm so because of that i have taken this actually organic farming is a production of crops and livestock without the use of synthetic chemicals and inorganic fertilizers so we are not using any kind of inputs chemically synthesized in the factory organic agriculture aims at the human welfare without any harm to environment which is the found, uh, foundation of the human life itself so this is actually and why we are actually asking for the organic agriculture because through this organic organic agriculture we are able to uh cultivate the healthy food that contains no toxic substance then natural and good taste whatever we are producing through this uh, our uh, chemical farming the quality is not as uh, which is with the organic agriculture then another point that is the higher benefit cost ratio due to the excess uh, uh, benefit cost ratio because in this we are not using any chemical fertil, uh, substance or any input which we are importing from the outside then the we take care of the environmental concern of the farming in the organic farming actually we take care of the environmental concern we are not polluting or deteriorating our environment and the cost benefit ratio is we can say low and input price are the is also very very low and the premium price which we are fetching from this organic produce is very high we can say it is 20 to 25% higher as compared to the chemical one then this ecological if you will go the uh, the definition of the organic agriculture so i think this organic agriculture is actual actually we can say this uh, uh organic agriculture is e ecological production management system that enhances biodiversity biological cycle and soil uh, management act, uh, biological activity it is based on the minimum use of off farm input and management practices that restore maintain and enhances the ecology and harmony otherwise or another terms we can say the organic farming is a system which avoids or largely excludes the use of synthetic input such as fertilizer pesticide hormones feed additives and to the maximum extent feasibly rely upon the crop rotation crop residue management animal manures off from organic waste mineral grade rock additives and biological system of nutrient mobilization and plant protection so these are actually in simple term if you want to say the definition of the organic agriculture as we all know that this uh, organic agriculture history if you will go to the history of the organic agriculture you will find that organic agriculture movement uh, actually was it was began in 1930s and 1940s and <coughs> at, uh, actually at that time the use of this synthetic fertilizer was very much in developed countries and because of this higher uses of this uh, synthetic uh, fertilizer they actually thought the utilization of the organic agriculture and in the second world uh, or we can say that after the first world war this nitrogen synthesis and utilization of the super phosphate fertilizer additions actually these were the major uh, we can say uh, inputs which we are using in the agriculture system so uh, they thought that how we can minimize this in, this synthesized organic synthesized product uh, instead of using the natural products sir albert howard he was considered as the father of the organic agriculture who actually has thought about, about this organic agriculture and another scientist and this australian philosopher actually he is, has a his own idea and he has utilized the biodynamic agriculture in which he has prepared the number of product through different uh, 
inputs uh, which actually were used for the agriculture. This is uh, from many uh, capsules for the agriculture, uh, organic agriculture production and others. Uh, see, biodynamic preparations numbers were given by Dr. Stanner. So actually his thought was different than the Mr. Robert. The actual, if you'll see the history of the Indian organic, uh, this Indian organic farming, the Indian organic farming practice uh, was uh, started thousands years back, we can say, and actually our innocent or our forefathers, they were doing the agriculture. That was actually, I consider it as a uh, organic agriculture. Because at that time they were not using any pesticides, they are not using any fertilizer or any nutrient additive for this agriculture. And the after the independence of uh, India has actually faced the food crisis, and because of the food crisis, we imported a, a lot of, of this food products from the developed country and in, I can say that everyone is knowing the PL480 project in which we imported the red wheat. So in, uh, then after our independence, we realized that we must uh, give some focus on our agriculture and with this introduction of this green revolution in our country, actually it has changed Indian agriculture scenario. And we became from food importer to the now in 90s and now we have uh, we are now food exporter so this way the ag indian agriculture scenario as i can say has changed during after this independence then this organic farming principle where it is very fair that in organic agriculture we take care about the health of our soil the four principles are basically we consider that in organic agriculture we maintain the health of our soil, we maintain the ecology, we, maintain, we care our, our nature, and we maintain the balance of use of inputs during our production scenario. So, this with the increase in the population, actually that makes our agriculture to shift from organic agriculture to the chemical agriculture. But after uh, continuous utilization of this uh, organic inputs, we find that there is a uh, problem in sustainability and with, with the continuous use of this inorganic materials or imbalance use of this uh, chemical fertilizer, actually it is not sustainable in long run that has been realized. Then the natural and another thing is why actually we are thinking for this organic and organic agriculture. Then natural balance needs to be maintained at, at the <clears throat> to maintain the soil quality and existence of life and property of soil. Then agrochemicals which we are produced from the fossil fuels are not renewable and are a diminishing in availability that we are facing now after this Ukraine and Russia war now. This year, you are knowing that we are facing problem in uh, importing of this, uh, particularly the phosphatic and potassium, phosphatic and potassium fertilizers. We are facing shortage of this DAP and potassium fertilizers. So that is actually also we have realized it, and it may also cost heavily on our foreign exchange because of import of this organic, uh, this inorganic uh, fertilizers. Then protecting the long term for fertility of soil by maintaining the organic matter level. Because when we are not adding this organic matter, we are unable to maintain the fertility of our soil. And we are not able to maintain the biological ecosystem also. So increase the soil biology and for careful mechanical intervention, actually we need this organic agriculture. And then providing the crop nutrient indirectly using relatively insoluble nutrient sources which are made available to the plant by the action of soil microbes. That can be done through the use of this compost, vermicompost or you can say city waste compost. So with the use of this we can provide nutrient to the plant. Then we want to uh, get this self-sufficient in the nitrogen supply also. Though the use of this legume 
legume crops actually biological nitrogen fixation actually takes place in the leguminous crops it has a very good uh, we can say that a leguminous crop has its own factory that can fix the atmospheric nitrogen to the soil and that will be available to our crop so with the utilization of this uh, leguminous crop and um, we can say this biological nitrogen fixation can be done and this uh, actually this biological is more effective uh, including this crop residue and crop manures actually this uh, uh, organic manures that actually help in the building of the population of the microbes weed disease and pest control rank primary rotation natural predator diversity organic manuring resistant variety and a limited thermal biological and chemical interventions actually are actually needed in this organic agriculture if we think about this what are the component actually involved in this uh, organic farming so principally we can say there are some uh, components actually which are now we consider very very important and should be given attention to get the maximum productivity through this organic farming previously our farmers were not utilizing or we can say not using the other components in because of their they face problem in maintaining the pest population or maintaining the biological diversity so with the use of this uh, this component we can now have actually achieved the optimum production through, through this organic farming and these are the components that are vermicompost utilization of the vermicompost use of green leaf manure that is green manuring another is crop rotation next one is the compost or uh, manures utilization of the manures whatever manures we are getting either poultry or uh, city compost or any other compost we are preparing then crop uh, rotation that is very important then biological management system actually biodiversity we have a very good biodiversity in our soil we want to maintain this biodiversity in our <coughs> system also then utilization of the animal husbandry that is actually this backbone of our organic agriculture and fortunately the government of chatisgarh has given attention on it and in this narva garva gurva body project they have given consideration on this uh, animal husbandry and the utilization of this bio fertilizer that is very very important in this uh, we can say the very important component of organic agriculture you will see the organ status of organic agriculture as we know that in world wise more than 31 million hectares area is under organic agriculture in india we can say that more than 4.33 million hectare hectare actually area is under organic agriculture and uh, out of this uh, 2.65 million hectare is under cultivable we can say organic agriculture and under 1.68 is wild forest which we are we are getting this uh, we are lucky enough that in our chatisgarh uh, this uh, wild harvest system is still existing in our bastar and sarguja region the total organic area uh, um, farming in chatisgarh we can say more than 71000 hectare area is under organic agriculture but certificate certified organic production system area is very limited for that actually we have the government of chatisgarh already this has made one agency authorized one agency for the certification of the organic product that is cg cert located in the near the vidhan sagar road in the uh, this uh, forest development corporation office and they have this uh, certifying agency cg cert uh, actually we can say the four state where this organic agriculture is uh, 70% contribution of organic agriculture that is uh, orissa jammu kashmir rajasthan maharashtra mp kerala and now chatisgarh has taken organic agriculture uh, in their program and they have prepared this uh, entire uh, program of organic agriculture before moving to this organic agriculture i just wanted to share that what are the plant nutrition actually which is essential for the agri growth of a, uh, any plant for that actually uh, according to our scientists we have classified the nutrient in terms of macronutrients and in terms of micronutrients macronutrients means uh, 
the nutrient actually which is taken up by the plants more than 1% of their dry weight or more than 1% dry weight that nutrients actually are needed that is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, potassium, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium and sulfur. These are actually called the macronutrient, primary nutrient and secondary nutrient and another that is term which we are giving to this micronutrient actually that need is in very uh, limited quantity we can say from one one parts uh, less than one to the several hundred parts per million or less than one ppm to one thousand ppm so that is actually needed and these nutrient are iron chlorine copper manganese zinc molybdenum boron actually these are called for uh, necessary for the plant growth that are that is called the micronutrient. If you'll see that we have analyzed the deep tissue of any plant and we found that the, if you'll analyze any product and generally it contains more than 44% carbon, 44% uh, carbon, 44% oxygen, then 6% hydrogen and uh, we can say that this way, in around 95% or 94% of the plant body is constituted by CHO only. And remaining 6 to 4% is actually is needed to the crop from the soil. So this way we can say this nitrogen, potassium, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, sulfur, actually these are called the macronutrient and micronutrient which are already done, a requirement is less than one part per billion to uh, 1000 part that is actually called the micronutrient. So I can say that the nutrient requirement from soil is very, very meager. Only four to six percent nutrient is been taken up by the plant from the soil. So if you'll see the different components of organic farming, the, uh, from where we can get this nutrient which is actually taken up by the plant, that is organic manure, which I have already discussed about that one, the Narva Garva Gurva Vadi project. The government has already focused to prepare this organic manure through utilizing this. They have started procuring the uh, gober, uh, cow dung from the farmers and utilizing this for the compost and vermicompost production. Then non-chemical weed control methods actually we are utilizing in this organic agriculture. And this allelopathic effect we have already seen number of uh we can say plants are available through which we can control these weeds then prevention of means the disease or uh, we can say insects can be prevented by utilizing the different uh, management practices like uh, this uh, interculture uh, operation or interventions of the some of the uh, your new crops can be like your uh, this uh, coriander or other crops can be grown in between the row, can control the other pests and diseases. Then mechanical practices actually we use for the control of the um, controlling of the weeds and other. Then competitive plant species actually we are growing that will compete more fastly. They grow growth of this plant are more as compared to weeds. Then this way we can overcome the uh, problem of weeds, weeds in our field. Then stack seed bed techniques that is also uh, practice common practices for the organic. Then biological weed management project which we are utilizing in organic agriculture. Bio herbicides we are using. Biological pest and disease management we are adopting. Then this uh, conservation and natural enemies pest we are utilizing. Resistance variety and crop rotations. Actually, these are the practices. And then one very common questions which we want. Just I wanted to tell you that we have to feed our soil, not to the crop. As I have already discussed this, that why we have to feed our soil because there is a large biodiversity in soil. We, we can say the microflora and fauna, diverse microflora, uh, flora and fauna is exist in the soils. If we we'll allow them, if we we'll feed them they will grow definitely and that will actually extract the nutrient or solubilize the nutrient which is available in the soil and can be taken on the brand. 
to our in organic agriculture we should feed our soil not to the plant feed the bugs microorganism bacteria fungi actinomites mycetes protozoa algae nematodes macrophanum actually this, if you will feed these they will proliferate and they will provide they will survive they will extract nutrient from different sources then utilization of this farm yard manure that everybody knows the advantage of i am not going to discuss this then actually this pharma minerals contains the different npk content it, it differs from 0.56 percent uh, nitrogen to 1.8 in poultry manure or in dry manure uh, it ranges up to 1.5 depending upon the quality material which we are using for production of this farm yard manure and this also contain phosphorus or potash which can be utilized or which can be actually uh, taken up by the plant for their growth and promotion then another component which is very important in the organic agriculture that is, is the green manuring green manuring is actually major uh, crop which actually uh, apply the not only fixes the atmospheric nitrogen but it also provides the it mobilizes the phosphorus from the phosphorus and other nutrients from lower level to the surface so this way this uh, green manuring crop is very important green manuring is the type of cover crop which actually add nutrient to organic matter to soil when we are not able to provide this uh, compost to the our soil then we must think over uh, uh, must think for the green manuring actually this is the actually green manuring is the only crop which can add the organic matter to the soil this uh, as you know this this green manuring crop should have more uh, we can say foliage as compared to any other things so, uh, the green manuring should have propose leaf and rapid growth have abundance and succulence of top and capable of making good stand on poor and adjusted soil have a deep root system the legume with good nodular habit actually it fixes the nitrogen for the ground and the capacity of the nitrogen fixation of this green manure crop sun ham actually fixes maximum nitrogen and then from sun ham to sanji actually this nutrient con nitrogen concentration is very high and sun hem dencha moong kaupi senji kesari batrim these are the some crops which we can utilize sun hem dencha moong and kaupi are can be grown in kharif and senji kesari and batrim can be utilized for green manuring in the rabi season then nowadays as you know that warming compost preparation of warming compost very it's uh, uh, doing by our uh, different uh, Gotan Samitis, and we are providing this warming compost to our farmers. Actually, this warming compost is a stable, fine granular organic matter. When it is added, to it, it actually improves the physical structure of the soil and increases the uh, passes of air, and it actually improves the water holding capacity. The mucus attached to the cross between uh, actually is actually responsible for the water holding capacity of the soil. So an average nutrient concentration is also it contains one nitrogen 1.5 percent and phosphorus potassium calcium magnesium sulfur other micronutrients also actually is available with this vermicompost and it is solely available to the work crop so this way we can say that the vermicompost is a good source of nutrient then crop residues uh, just you know that the, nowadays crop rotation is very very important and crop residues crop residue means incorporation of the whatever crop we have harvested all the residue should be incorporated should be incorporated into the soil so this way we can say that incorporation of this crop residue in the soil actually that contains the nutrient and these are the some crop uh, residues rice wheat sorghum maize pearl millet barley finger millet sugar cane pulses and they are actually the, whatever quantity it is available and that we have depicted and then npk content which this residue content so i can say that sufficient quantity of nutrient is available is uh, adhere with this crop residues can be utilized very effectively for the organic farming then another important um, uh, component of the organic farming is the biofertilizer you know that biofertilizer everybody is knowing the biofertilizer and this biofertilizer is a good good source of nutrient actually these biofertilizer have the capacity to fix atmospheric nitrogen and this uh, symbiotic uh, nitrogen fixation asymbiotic and non symbiotic nitrogen fixations uh, um, biofertilizers are available and this uh, 
Um, Biofertilizers are even solubilized and make available the unsoluble uh, nutrients which are available in the soil. So the type of biofertilizer which we are utilizing nowadays in organic nowadays organic agriculture is nitrogen fixing and in this nitrogen fixing symbiotic nitrogen fixer and living nitrogen fixer and phosphorus solubilizer. And these are the biofertilizers and these uh, have defected some nitrogen biofertilizer symbiotic nitrogen biofertilizer rhizobium and azola associate uh, symbiotic uh, azospiral azotobacter and non symbiotic azotobacter and blue green algae it fixes you know, 50 to 300 kg nitrogen and uh, some uh, this associate symbiotic nitrogen fixes uh, fixes 30 to 50 kg nitrogens and likewise this non symbiotic also 20 to 50 kg nitrogen is fixed by this uh, nitrogen fixer something likewise the phosphorus biofertilizers they actually there are two types of biofertilizers one is phosphorus solubilizer and another is absorber so uh, the solubilizer are all crops this penicillium aspergillus penicillium and pseudomonas bacillus these are the some microorganisms actually which can solubilize the available uh, unsoluble phosphorus which is available in the soil and this uh, with this help of this biofertilizer it may solubilizes the phosphorus in the soil and plant is uh, able to take up the solubilized form of phosphorus and the micro phosphorus absorber when virus vascular or vascular mycorrhiza actually is uh, enhances the surface area um, like just like it is a fungal increases this uh, IV and can go up to the lower level and deeper depth and can uh, absorb the phosphorus from the different layers. So this way the absorption capacity increases through this uh, and can move the phosphorus from different layers. Then compost biofertilizer, we are the compost catalyst. We are now here to decompose this bulky organic matter, the trichoderma, cellulomonas and autobacters. These are actually helpful in degrading this cellulose and lignin component. And this way we can, uh, we are able to dive, decompose our organic matter very fastly. For enrichment of the compost, we are using the azotobacter and azospiralum and penicillin for the nitrogen and phosphorus enrichment. And these are the some different type of biofactoria which, which we, we can utilize in our uh, different crops, legume crops, non-legume crops, azotobacter, azospiralum and for sugar, sugar can azotobacters. For PSB can be utilized for all the crop and WAM also can be utilized for the all the crop. And these are the some crop. Then regarding the pest management in, uh, you can say the organic agriculture, the biological management of pest is different. Biological system is fixed. Then in this, the rodent, termites, ants, insect, field bee birds, honey bees. These are actually are the actual, uh, we can say cycle in which we can manage the insect in our agriculture system, in organic agriculture system. For the control of the rats, the rat is also a problem in, for the, so, to control the rats in our agriculture, prepare a concentrated sugar solution and dip a cotton in the sugar solution and dry it in sun and then place this in the uh, holes of this uh, where the rats live. And uh, when the rats utilize this, the rats are uh, social animal lives in colony, they will leave uh, when they will use this uh, cotton, sugar cotton solution, they will either some of the Rats will be die or some will have some problem, they will escape away from that particular location. Another biological agent predator such as ladybird, spider, the dragonfly, and then <coughs> trichoderma, uh, trichoguard, brachoguard, these are nowadays a practice in which we can prepare the natural para, uh, this uh, agent, para, this parasites, which are actually able to control the um, insects. Uh, the, harmful insect. Then pathogens which are actually a bacteria and fungi, this actually are uh, actually create uh, and make diseases on the over the pest and disease and this way they control the pest and disease. For the pest management and there are some pest management strategies in agriculture how to control this green hopper and how to control these uh, Test. So there, these are already given. I'm not going details and then crop yield should, what actually happens with this uh, organic agriculture. For that, I just wanted to tell you that the in initial period, the organic agriculture, the convention, if you'll compare it with the 
traditional or conventional agriculture for initially first two three years you will see that there is a decrease in the uh, growth of the uh, organic agriculture or we can say the yield of organic agriculture is comparatively lower as compared to the con conventional crop so uh, but after three uh, after three year or third year you will find there is a considerable increase in the productivity and after five, five years the crop yield increases are it in maintained up to the level of the conventional system so this way we can say that there initially there because of the decrease in the organic matter content in the soil and uh, the productivity initially it goes down but later on after three years the, uh, because of this uh, and continuously addition of this organic matter it increases the biodiversity of microorganisms and then it salvages the nutrient and it actually enhances the supply of the nutrient to the crop and this way the organic agriculture is, gets a better yield uh, this is actually shown here that after five years uh, the organic agriculture is giving better yield as compared to the conventional agriculture and this organic agriculture uh, substance or uh, product actually contains higher <coughs> vitamin C uh, as compared to animals. So this uh, the organic agriculture actually uh, shows that uh, the, it is more uh, concentrated of vitamins and minerals as compared to the conventional agriculture. Then what about this organic on the environmental implication? Because as you know that the environmental implication, this organic agriculture, uh, contribution this nitrate leaching is very meager as compared to the conventional is I we can say that that it is four to five times uh, less uh, leaching of nitrate we have observed with the use of organic agriculture are in cover as cover comparison to our conventional agriculture then <clears throat> this conventional agriculture con contributes to the environmental actually damage and because of this uh, and how this actually damages the continuously utilization of the uh, nitrogenous fertilizers act creates environmental problem the nitrous oxide which is going into this and creates depleting the ozone layer and because of this global warming scenario is happening then excessive use of this nitrogen it also creates problem to the groundwater the nitrate accumulates in the groundwater that also causes problem then it uh, intensive livestock holdings that cover the and produce the manures and methane, methane production increases. So we can say that greenhouse emission, uh, greenhouse gases emission is more to, uh, when we are going for the conventional agriculture as compared to the organic agriculture. I'm going to detail, I'm not describing detail looking to the my time constant. Then this, this organic farming actually it mitigates the climate change. It reduces the greenhouse gases, it store carbon in soil and plant biomass that actually encourages uh, the agroforestry and actually uh, uh, we can say biodiversity also in the ecosystem and the minimizes the energy consumption by 30 to 70 percent per unit of land by eliminating the energy requirement for manufacturing of the fertilizer and other inputs actually which we synthesize in our industry and the last one is the biodiversity with the use of this organic agriculture we can maintain the biodiversity in our system and with this increase in the biodiversity means increase in the earthworm, butterfly, spiders, beetles, birds, we can control many of diseases and insects because of this biodiversity. So this with this the, the benefit of organic agriculture increases in the utilize the lower energy, greenhouse emission, emission is low, water use is less localization is there and pesticide and load is less ecosystem actually maintains nutritional uh, nutritional benefit is more in organic agriculture then seed saving is there because, and this job creation is more in uh, because uh, of this uh, higher market value of this organic products so this way we can say the conventional farmer can actually reduce the production cost by 20 percent and they can eliminate the use of synthetic fertilizer minimize the soil erosion up to 50 percent with the increasing crop yield up to five folds free from the harmful chemicals and artificial uh, flavors and preservatives and these organic foods may in fact actually reduce the risk of heart attack strokes and cancer so environmental benefits of the organic agriculture it actually 
this organic agriculture such as crop rotation and intensive crop system, this uh, symbiotic association and cover crops. Actually, this uh, fertilizer minimizes delays are concerned to organic practices. Then the water actually, uh, groundwater pollution is minimized. Air and climate is also not polluted uh, with this organic agriculture. Environmental is very safe for our living purpose. So we must, uh, the thrust uh, for our future that it protects, in long term we can say our soil uh, is protected, soil health is protected, organic matter actually uh, increase the bio biological activity and which actually is very good for the uh, our environment and product of, it, of our crop. It provides crop nutrient indirectly through the solubilization and mobilization of the nutrient. So that's why actually microorganisms and then self substance through use of legume and biological nitrogen system. Actually, it fixes the atmospheric nitrogen and provides nutrient to the crops. Then weed disease and pest can be controlled by this our natural predator diversity organic and, and uh, this uh, uh, different resistant variety which we are using nowadays for and biological and chemical interventions are minimized. Then extensive management of livestock and this adapt, uh, this evaluatory adaptation behavior needs welfare issues with the respect of the nutrition, housing and breeding and rearing. So this we can say that careful attention to the impact of farming system on the wider environment and conservation of the biodiversity. At last we can say that uh, this organic agriculture is viable alternative and with, with this we can actually sustain our uh, biological system and we can conserve our environment and atmosphere. I think this is sufficient. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and at, at last I would like to sincerely thanks uh, for, to the Chhattisgarh Council on Science and Technology, particularly Dr. Amit Dubey, Dr. Tripathi, Dr. Karvankar and his entire team has given me opportunity to speak on this occasion in Atmanagar. So with this, I would sincerely thank, once again thanks to the CG Club. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So very kind of you for accepting our invitation and enlightening us on organic farming and its role uh, in, in the present context. Uh, organic farming, as we all know, has been known since ages and has been practiced by even, you know, uh, from ages. Uh, but a new light, in new light, you have shown us how it can be beneficial in the present context. Uh, thank you. So very kind of you and thanks for accepting our invitation, sir. Thank you. Thank so, you, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, in the in the next part of our program, uh, uh, we we have a we have a, a, a guest who will be speaking upon basic sciences for Atmanirbharta, a mathematical approach towards society and development. Uh, so uh, I take this opportunity to introduce Dr. Deep Mala uh, Sharma, uh, Associate Professor and Faculty uh, of Department of Mathematics, National Institute of Technology, Raipur. Uh, Dr. Deepmala has bright academic uh, background. She completed her PhD from Department of Mathematics, IIT Roorkee in 2009 and joined the Department of Mathematics, Bits Pilani. In the year 2013, she moved to NIT Raipur and she has been, uh, you know, mentored to several students and working in the area of cryptography and statistics. She has, sig she has significant... Uh, uh, you know, contributions uh, in, in, in form of publications in national and international journals of repute. And she has acted in various administrative pro uh, positions as well, like in AIEEE Project Evaluation Committee, DSC, Warden, Chairperson, ARC, etc. and etc. She has, uh, you know, been involved in several scientific uh, uh, projects as well and has a great scientific acumen. And, and and also has participated in several work pertaining to industries, uh, uh, currently handling several live industrial problems and projects as well. So uh, without further delay, le, uh, I, I give over the uh, forum to Dr. Deepmala Sharma uh, for her presentation on a mathematical approach towards society and development, basic science for Atmanir Bharata. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Dubey. Very good afternoon. Honorable Director General C. Coast, Dr. Karmakar, distinguished scientists, speakers, guests, students, and all present. First of all, I am highly thankful and congratulate C. Coast for organizing a program on this wonderful team. 
the basic science for atmanirbhar with contest to chatisgarh the program is a need of today and solution for tomorrow i am thankful to be a part of this grand event so now without delay i am starting my talk with few display so is it visible sir dr dube is it visible sir my screen is visible or not yes ma'am it is visible please carry on it's visible madam okay. it's visible please okay thank on. you sir thank you thank you sir so as we are aware so dr gordhan hambade sir has told a lot of basic science role of basic science in the atmanirbharta self reliance so my talk is concentrated on the mathematics mathematical approach role of mathematics for uh, atmanirbharta okay so just see first of all what is the atmanirbharta so we can say atmanirbharta is the directly aligned with the skill to perform a particular task how we perform a particular task that is that skill is the atmanirbharta okay that is self reliance or now from where skill comes skill comes with techniques that techniques which are derived from the sciences okay so that is directly this atmanirbharta is directly connected to the science hambade sir told us that how we are using the science in developing our country okay gordon sir told us the basic knowledge of the basic role of basic science physics chemistry mathematics biology and their talk okay now what is the science what we know about the science so science is not a bookish knowledge this is a knowledge how we perform a task in a systematic and technical manner so how we perform a task this is the science okay so without science we can not imagine the present picture of india or any country even so what is the role of the science in the development of society now we can see we are living in a new phase of de development now we can see here today i am giving a talk on a virtual platform we can see here this is the development now we there is no need to go here and there we can give a talk we can keep our ideas in in a virtual on a virtual platform a uh, hundred thousand people can see our talk thousand more than thousand okay this is the development this is the new phase now we can take the online classes right so this is the development so what what the role of the science in the development suppose we have any problem any problem so what is the origin of that problem what are the characteristics of the problem and what are the consequence of the problem so we can understand these things with the help of this science okay so with the help of the science we can find the solutions of the problem also okay so what we do in uh, for the development we transform the tra scientific breakthrough into the new technology and that technology impact on the development of a country we can see everywhere if the development is con uh, connected with the science so we can say the development of a country is and all most depend on the advancement in the developing of a technology if we are developing the technology we are uh, uh, we can develop our country in any way in the different fields whatever field you can see sir uh, that uh, bajpayee sir uh, given the uh, talk on the agriculture organic agriculture so we can see the role of the science in the growth of the country the, now where the exponential growth of the technology play on a significant role in the development and growth of the economy of a country you know where now 
we are talking about the atmanirbharta 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 of an individual okay now the development of a country or development of a society with connected with the development is individual if individual is developing then we can that and a country can develop now now we are talking about the basic science basic science means physics chemistry mathematics biology these are the basic science so all these are important for the growth of the country even for the uh, research technology we need these four pillars and mathematics is the pillar one of the pillar of the science and technology and for the development you know we use mathematics everywhere our day starts with mathematics when we uh, uh, fix an alarm then is also mathematics when we see a watch then that also have number mathematics is everywhere even nobody can be atmanirbhar self reliance without without mathematics am, am i right okay so if we go to the market we want to purchase something so we should know the counting without mathematics we cannot do anything no so you can imagine the role of mathematics in a individual life so we have a different definition of mathematics different writers have given the different definition so according to angles angles mathematics is a science whose subject matter is special forms and quantitative quantitative relationship of the real world so we can convert the real world problems into the mathematical problems similarly peer is in the words of peer mathematics is a science which draw necessary conclusion obviously when we modeling anything in the form of math mathematical model we draw the conclusion in that words of law mathematics is a way to settle in the mind of general a habit of reasoning obviously we can see when we draw when we solve a problem then we see how we can do this we can give the reason we can solve the the things in a particular numbering methods so what is the science in the simplest form this is a science mathematics is a science of measurement quantity and magnitude so we cannot in without mathematics we cannot imagine the development of a person as well as the development of a country so bruce baker once stated the neglect of mathematics works injury to all knowledge since he who is the ignorant of it cannot know the other sciences or the things of the world it's true everyone know about this so uh, just i will explain the mathematics and the development of the different field just i will give you some theory about after that i will take one application of the mathematics i will tell you simple mathematics in the terms of the communication technology internet technology okay so development of the educational system so we know very well development of the educational system we cannot imagine if we want to read any we are obviously an it raipur uh, here is when do the btech but without mathematics they cannot read any subject so mathematics is the integrated subject for them they read mathematics 1 mathematics 2 mathematics 3 mathematics 4 without mathematics we cannot prepare the good engineers right in the physics also in chemistry also we need mathematics in the life science business accountancy even even simple vocational areas like tailoring carpenting cooking in all these fields we need the mathematics without mathematics we cannot imagine these a system okay similarly we see the economics development of the economics what is the economics economics of the society is developed by the establishment of the industries we establish the industry which grow the country but without mathematics obviously this uh, the existence of industry is not there okay so the applied mathematics there are fields of mathematics which are used to develop the economics of a country for example computational science astronomy optimization differential equation data analysis these all are the topics which we use for the 
uh, economics infrastructure now development of the infrastructure so what is the development of infrastructure these are the building we are roads building state stadium flyover airports dams bridges vehicles airplanes all these are the part of the infra infrastructure if our infrastructure is good our country is moving to the more development without this inf infrastructure we cannot imagine the development and what we the, and mathematics is the need of these all uh, components you can see if we for uh, uh, we are designing a road we are designing a building or we are uh, um, in the air airports we are designing and flight also when we, uh, a pilot uh, flights uh, uh, driving the flight then he know he see that how which angle we have to move uh height should be like that so everywhere we can say the mathematics in the development of science and technology you know any uh, if we are doing the research in any field we need we need mathematics if any architecture do the field he comes to me and asks me okay please tell me what thing i can do here so we need the mathematics in science and technology in the research and development we know in a, you can say the mathematical modeling what is the mathematical modeling the real life problem we convert in the mathematics form in the form of differential equation in the mathematics form and then we solve we draw the conclusion about the uh, about our research right similarly you uh, development of the medical science and agriculture cannot be imagined without mathematics when we suppose we are doing we are research researching on the uh, on a medicine so we see we uh, analyze this we give the statistical comparison with the existing one and the, with the new one medicine and then we compare which is good so without mathematics we cannot imagine the development of medical science and agriculture also similarly the development of information and communication technology the direct application of mathematics here you can see today uh, this is the age of the internet everything we are doing on the internet we are doing banking transaction we are doing uh, purchasing movies etc we are sharing our personal information here and there so this this uh, this is the age of the internet and internet is based on the mathematics one of the field which is directly connected to the mathematics i want to explain that field which is the application of mathematics in information and communication technology okay so we can see the country strongly depends on in technology and this is this technology is unthinkable without mathematics i will show a, a small example of mathematics which we use for the security point of view okay so information and communication communication technology play role in the transforming the social and economic development of a country you can see Today, nowadays, without internet, we cannot do anything. Even without internet, I can't give the talk in this platform, right? And this information and communication technology relies heavily on the mathematical techniques for models and modern communication channels and network. For example, we know uh, we use the language zero one language on the computer. What is this? These are the Boolean functions. This come from the algebra. Okay, so this is one important field which is called as the cryptography. I'm taking one example on that. I am showing the direct application of mathematics in this field. What is cryptography? Just listen. What is the cryptography? This is a technique, the secure uh, technique of securing information and communication through uses of codes, so that only that person for whom the information is intended can understand it and processes. For example, suppose we bank transaction, karte hai, we do the transaction from the banks. Okay, internet banking we use. We 
write the user ID and that password. Then that password is understandable by the bank. That software also that convert into uh, an encrypting language and then we transfer our message to that transaction and we tran we use the transaction of money from there. So we need the security. Then cryptography is just a language which provide the security of these type of transaction. Even suppose I want to talk to you to a particular person and I want that this message should not go through any other else. So I have to use the symbolic language. I will use the symbolic language to understand, to explain my message, to give my message to other. Okay, so cryptography, what is cryptography? Cryptography is the channel which helps to communicate securely between the two person that third person cannot understand it. Beside this, cryptography helps us to uh, talk secretly and also it ensure the integrity and preservation of the data from tampering. Means nobody can tamper that message. Suppose I am sending an email to some person that in between that email should not be tampered. Okay. So the cryptography gives us this security also. Now, in the cryptography, we use that technique, some techniques which used to protect the information. Those techniques come from the mathematical concepts. We use the mathematical concepts to uh, protect our information. A simple example I can give for that. For example, I want to say, welcome to anyone. So I will convert mathematically it into the language. Means I can convert W to T in by using some mathematical operation. Okay, so that 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 technique use which used to uh, protect the information we use from the mathematical concepts. And a set which we use for the calculation, those are known as the algorithm which are used to convert a message. So that that can that message is impossible to decode. Actually, nothing is impossible, but how we can make more difficult to decode it? That techniques comes from, from the mathematics. These algorithms which we use to convert the message are used for cryptographic key generation, digital signing, verification of the protect data privacy, web browsing on internet and to protect confidential transactions such as credit card, debit card and etc. Okay, so just see what is what we do here. Now, suppose I want to send a message. Suppose I want to send a message. So I want to hide that message. So the process to hide a message in such a way that we can anyone any um, unknown person cannot see that actual message that process is called the encryption that process is called the encryption now that message this these are the mathematical language or crypto language for our message means that message is called the plain test when we encrypt means we hide that message by the process of encryption that encrypted message is called the cipher test right then again when suppose that person for which I want to send that message. Now that uh, uh, message again, that person will convert it into the plain test. So that cipher test back back into plain test. That process is called decrypt decryption. So we have a message here. Our plain test message is here. Then encrypting in we are doing the encryption of that message then we are generating the cipher test that cipher test is going toward the noisy channels okay now nobody can read the cipher test then again that person which uh, which is the receiver of that message then again it will convert it into the original plain test by using the process of decryption so this process use the mathematics this process is, used, is using the mathematics, a function, 
functions from the mathematics. So this is the direct role of the mathematics here in the field of the cryptography. Now, what are the cryptographic system? These cryptographic system rely, actually I am not just uh, concentrating on the cryptography. I am just concentrating on the application of the mathematics in cryptography. How we can show a small mathematical application of the cryptography which directly related to the communication and internet technology and how we can show a simple example of role of mathematics in for the art nirbhata. That is the only way. Okay. Now, what is the cryptography? The, that cryptographic system which rely on these functions for encryption and description, these are directly associated with the advanced mathematics. And actually, here there uh, some important branch of mathematics we use for this cryptographic purpose. These are the algebra, field theory, and one more branch is called as the number theory. Number theory is the most uh, popular branch for the cryptography, which explore the properties of the number and the relationship between the numbers. Okay, so number theory, I will show you the use of the number theory by taking one example of the crypto system. Before that, I will, I want to introduce the, these algorithms. These are the two types of algorithm which we use for the cryptography. These are the, the first one is the symmetric algorithm. Symmetric algorithm, what is the symmetric algorithm? Suppose we have a sender, which is sending the masses. Masses is the plain test. So by using some type of key that encrypt our masses and their uh, encrypt uh, his masses to a cipher test. So for this is the key to encrypt the message. Suppose I want to uh, say, okay, I can explain this by using some data diagram. Suppose you want to send hello. You want to send hello. So what he do? X plus five more twenty six more twenty six means we have the alpha alphabets A B C D twenty six alphabets are there. So, so we know the number A number A number A A is number is one B number is two C number is three D number is four E number is five F number is six G number is seven. H number is 8. Okay, so 8 plus 5 more 26. So 8, 5 is equals to 13. So in place of H, we put the word which is coming, which we would put the letter which is coming on the 13th position. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, Z, K, L, M. So in place of H, I will put M. Similarly, in place of E, E is on the position of A, B, C, D, E, fifth position. So, fifth plus fifth, in E K, tenth. So, tenth position letter is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. I, sorry, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So, M, J. In this, similarly, we can change L, O. So, this word will go to the channel. This is the cipher test and I will give the same key to the person for which I am sending the message who is the recipient. So he will again 8 minus 5 more 26. Then he will got the same message which I have sent to it. If nobody is know this key, this is the simplest example. Anyone can do this. A very simple example. This is just an I'm exemplify this. Here I have used the mathematics. You see, I have used the addition mode M. So in to hide my message, I have used this mathematics addition mode M. Now this key, suppose I want to sending this receiver. This receiver has the same key five. Then it will decrypt this message and got my message which I have sent it. This type of 
no math uh, algorithms are called the symmetric algorithms in which we use the same key to encrypt and decrypt the uh, plain text and cipher text okay so this is these type of symmetric algorithm we use now uh, but these are not too secure because we are sharing a key so these type of algorithm we use in those sector where we need a short time security for example banking sector online payment validation you can see when we uh, do any transaction then we uh, we get a one time password password otp right that is otp they send us the otp we put that otp and uh, we can do the transaction so we need a short term security jaise wo otp use hoga that will be invalid that will become invalid though there uh, the factors where we need the short term security we use these type of algorithm there these are called the symmetric algorithm where we are sharing the same key now the uh, another type of algorithm these are the asymmetric algorithm where uh, these asymmetric algorithm where the both key are the different one key is called as the public key and another key is called as the private key both key are the different different means uh, 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 they can not be generated from one to other and these algorithm we use there we where we need a long term security don't term security for example email security web security digital signature security and other encryption where we if we exchange the key then that will become insecure okay so that where the public network is there we we need to change the key exchange over the public network then we use these type of asymmetric this type of algorithm and the condition is that uh, that uh, for example suppose i want to uh, send a, an email to someone so by using my private key by using the public key that uh, plain text will be converted into the encrypted message the cipher text and when i will get this email and i want to read it i will read you use with it's my private key and i can read that message okay so here these two key are different and one key cannot be obtained from other one of the example of the asymmetric algorithm we are using from a long time that is called as the rsc system this rsa system is public uh, key crypto system which are invent which was invented by rivesh shamir and adamel that's why it is called as the rsa crypto system rsa crypto system is very very old crypto system public key crypto system but till now it is very important and it is used in the public network so what is the mathematics behind the rsc algorithm now i will show you i will show you the security mechanism by using mathematics of this rsc algorithm which type of mathematics we are using here to secure a crypto system so we have uh, i don't know who uh, how many are uh, know about the number theory here we shall use the number theory mathematics Uh, number theory of the that 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 is a particular uh, one of the branch of the mathematics number theory to find an algorithm. This is the as asymmetric algorithm as I have told you. Now this is uh, based on the prime factorization. We uh, I think uh, everyone know what is a prime number. The prime number which cannot be divide, uh, which can divide only one or itself. No any number for example 17 17 can be divided by one or itself only so that type of number is called as a prime number everyone knows this is a prime. and now our algorithm is prime factorization what is prime factorization suppose we have a number n and which have two prime factor now this is just to infeasible to factorize that number to a prime number that theory is behind of the rsa algorithm 
this is a prime factorization is not possible suppose i have a number suppose i am uh, giving you one number 167 uh, 1678 suppose i am giving this number now i am telling you give me the two prime factor of this so this is difficult i am not talking about the small number i am talking of the big numbers so this concept rsc algorithm is based on that prime factorization in feasibility of the prime factorization how we generate the key i will show you i will generate the key one uh, one key which is will be used to uh, encryption and another key which will use to decryption and both key cannot be generated very easily suppose i have i am generating so i know the number okay so suppose i have two large prime numbers say p and q these i have to kept secret these are the secret for i know only i know this nobody can know this so these p and q are secret i am generating my keys now i will generate a number n n is the product of p and q i will give a mathematical example also so first i am telling you how we are generating the key now i will generate a number n which is the product of these two prime number p and q now i will calculate phi n phi n phi n actually phi n is the totient what is the meaning of the phi n the number of the integer less than n the number of the integer positive integer less than n which are relatively prime to n which are the relatively prime to n relatively prime means suppose we have three just a minute we have three and five so the what is the greatest common divisor of three and five is one so these are the relatively co, uh, these are the co prime numbers so what is phi, phi, phi n phi n is an in number of integer less than equals to n which are relatively prime to n relatively prime to n so this is just equal to p minus 1 and q minus 1 because number of the relatively prime to a prime number we know what is the prime number which can be divided by p and 1 means 1 or p itself okay so the number of integer which are co prime to a prime number will be p minus 1 similarly because p is a prime number q is a prime number and n is the product of p and q then the number of integer which are relatively prime to n and less than n will be p minus 1 into q minus 1 so this is the phi n now we will choose a integer e which is co prime means relatively prime means greatest common divisor of e and phi n is 1 and e is less than phi n we will choose this is our choice this is our choice we can choose any number which satisfies this property so now what is the our encryption key which is called as the public key means we will release this key into the public that is n e we know e we know n but we don't know p and q and we know but e and this uh, mathematics what behind this the security or of, of rsa crypto system depends on this n if you can uh, if anyone can factorize n as in form of p and q we anyone can know p and q then obviously then its security becomes safe now what is the decryption key means which we uh, by using we will decrypt our cipher test now we that is an again an integer d which satisfies this relation this is a mathematical relation d is congruent congruence relation one if uh, 12th class mathematics know that what is this the d e we will choose a number d such that d into e, e congruent to one mode phi n which satisfies this relation congruent relation this comes from the number theory then our decryption key will be n comma d so our encryption key is n comma e and decryption key is n comma d this is private by using this key i can decrypt any message which is coming to me now how we will encrypt a message we will encrypt a message message means which is a plain test 
we will convert it into a cipher test by this encryption process. This is the cipher test. This C. C is the cipher test and M is my message which I want to send. Then that, that is converting by this mathematical operation. C is congruent to M raised to the power E mod N. Now that message will be converted into C. C is the cipher test. Now, now this C will go to the channel, insecure channel. And it will reach to that, that person he want to see it. Then again, he will decrypt this message by this equation m is equals to c raised to the power d mod n. So now he will recover this message again in form of m. Here, m is expression of my message in the form of number. Means what we will do? Uh, we will convert our message into a mathematical form, mathematical number. Then we will, do, we will use this cipher test. Then we will uh, send this cipher test to the channel. Then again, that person will decrypt the cipher into a plain test. Then it will get the message. Now, there are a lot of method to express a message into a number. Into a number, there are a lot of padding schemes we can see. This is the working example, which is a mathematics we can see here. I, suppose I have chosen two numbers, two prime numbers, 53 and 59. Both are the prime numbers, 53 and 59. Now I have chosen n. n is uh, p star q multiplied by uh, q. Now this number 3127 and phi n is 3016. Okay. Now I have chosen e. E is less than phi n and relatively prime to n. Means you can see 3016 is not divisible by 3. So I have taken E as 3. Anyone can take any E. Now my public key is 3127, E. Up the, this number is in front of you, 3127. Its prime factorization is difficult. With number is longer than also difficult. Large is also difficult. Then we will calculate D with the help of E. D E is equals to K. That, that equation we have to solve. D E is equals to K star phi n plus 1. Means for some integer K, I have to find D in such a way. So I have taken, I have chosen K as 2 and I have calculated D as 2011. So now my private key is 3127 and 2011. In this way, sorry, this is my private key. Now, suppose I am, I want to send a message. Suppose I want uh, to send a message to hi to someone. Now, I will convert into the plain cipher test. Hi, I have used this, that padding scheme. I have taken H number as 8. A, B, C, D, E, F. What is the number of H is 8. I is 9. So mathematical expression I have converted uh, of my message is 89. Now my encrypted cipher test C is 89 raised to the power 3 mod 3127. This can be done with the help of the number theory. Number theory Fermat little theorem we can use here to calculate this expression. This is coming 1394. So now my message is converted into 1394. Now this 1394 will go through the channel. Now the receiver will receive this number. Now he will use a decryption key that is, that is D n comma D. Then he will again recover this plain uh, this cipher test into the plain test m is equals to 1394 raised to the power d mod n mod n is equals to 89 so 89 he got so he got that the message is high so this is the way this is just simple example i have given to you in order to show the role of mathematics in this field so in this sense role of mathematics is everywhere where we have the role of mathematics in communication technology it's uh, increasing rapidly in the development of a country now you uh, we can see this is very important and hot topic now nowadays so the important of ma importance of mathematics can be understood from here so
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, madam, for your presentation on uh, the role of mathematics in uh, and its role in basic uh, as a basic science in Atmanirbharta. Uh, and you, it's uh, you, you have already showed a whole lot of application pertaining to mathematics from encryption to decryption and other other uh, uh, though I don't belong to mathematics. I didn't understand uh, uh, that much, but yes, whatever I could understand. Uh, so very thankful for accepting our invitation as well. Thank you, uh, sir. Thank you for thank you. giving me this uh, opportunity. Thank you. Thank sir. you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, we move to uh, the last leg of our program. Uh, the, la the last speaker, uh, invited speaker, would be uh, Dr. Sandhya Pillai from uh, Department of uh, Physics, uh, presently working as head uh, associate professor and head Department of Physics, Christian College of Engineering and Technology, Bilai. Uh, she is a uh, doctor. She has uh, a doctoral degree in physics. Uh, also has a PG diploma in public relation and advertising, uh, advertising from Kerala Press Academy with merit position in 1995. She has got around uh, 29 years of teaching uh, experience in, at, at BSc, MSc level, uh, B level on on physics and applied physics in nanotechnology, uh, structure bonding and quantum mechanics of electronics. Synthesis of nanomaterial, uh, MEMS and NEMS, etc. She has she she is a recipient of level five certificate in uh, leadership and management from uh, Chartered Management Institute UK. Uh, she is a master trainer for AICT UK IERI LNM training program. Uh, she is a research supervisor in applied physics from uh, CSVTU and presently. Uh, uh, guy, uh, uh, is guiding two uh, PhD uh, students and has guided nine uh, MTech students. She has uh, more than 30 uh, research papers in uh, uh, various in national and international journals and conferences. She has also published a book on ele electro optical studies and semiconducting film doped with rare earth, which has been published from Lombard Academic Publication, uh, Germany. So uh, let me give uh, the forum to uh, Dr. San uh, Sandhya Pillai uh, for her presentation on physics for Atmanirbharta. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Amit Dubey. Uh, respected uh, Dr. S. Karmakar, Director General of Seacost, distinguished speakers of today, uh, scientists from Seacost, research scholars, and uh, students who are attending this program. Uh, Good afternoon to one and all here. I'm extremely honored to be a part of Vigyan Otsar and uh, today's deliberation on basic science for Atman Nirbharta organized by Chhattisgarh Council of Science and Technology. I'm thankful to CCOS for having given me this opportunity to be a part of this program and also to express my thoughts on the topic. I feel very privileged to be amidst renowned experts in different fields and especially Professor Hambarde sir, who, with whom I've had several interactions, fruitful interactions during his tenure as uh, the Director General of Seacost. So uh, thanks to Seacost once again for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I'd, I'd like to share my presentation. Is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the presentation is not visible, but you are audible. And now it is coming yeah. up. Is the presentation it visible is, now? It is visible. Yes, yes, ma'am. It is visible. Okay. I've shared a PDF file. Uh, I'll just see whether it's I'm able to move it. It's okay. Okay. So uh, moving on to the topic for today, I'm sure uh, all of you would have had uh, a good uh what can i say a nice uh, set of lectures from different eminent speakers in different fields and uh, mine being the last maybe uh, everyone is waiting for their lunch but still i would like to uh, go for a short presentation on physics for atmanirbharta 
uh, before we move on to talking about physics for Atmanirbharata, I would like to uh, talk on how science is useful for society. Many of our speakers, earlier speakers have already spoken about this, that science has a major role and has a and it presents a way ahead for Atmanirbhar Bharat. We all know that science is a foremost tool to find out the explanations for many phenomena around us. And uh, starting from classical mechanics to quantum mechanics, it has been a long journey of foregoing many theories and uh, accepting new ones. And we know that India has been in the forefront of science and technology. And uh, we have many examples from history. That is, in, from, since ancient times, we have scientists like Susruta and Charaka in medical field, Bhaskaracharya and Aryabhatta from mathematical sciences, Kanad and Nagarjuna from uh, pharmaceutical sciences. So these uh, persons, we have heard from ancient times who have contributed a lot to science and technology. And similarly, the Indian philosophy, the Indian philosophy has includes uh, the Sankhya, Vaisheshika, Nyaya, Yog. Then we have this uh, Mimamsa, Vedanta. All these are a part of the Indian philosophy, which presents deep insights on logic, atomic theory, how things are perceived, how inferences are drawn, postulation, how the inferences drawn are compared, and the analysis. And we know that science also has all these, these are the main components of how science is, and science leads to technology. So these dimensions are the core components of modern science. Now, we know that science aided by technology and innovation. That is how today's world has uh, moved on from just basic sciences, moving on to technology. And now innovation is the edge towards which we can find solution to many problems, numerous problems that is uh, that we may be facing. And innovation can be achieved only through multidisciplinary research. So we can say that multidisciplinary research, which will incorporate maths, physics, chemistry, computer science, engineering, pharmaceutical sciences. So all these way, all these subjects together, when they collaborate and work in a cohesive manner, the multidisciplinary research can help us in becoming a self-reliant self nation. And that vision of achieving Atman Nirbhar Bharat can be achieved through this kind of innovative research that can be achieved when all these subjects join together. The draft fifth National Science Technology and Innovation Policy, which has which was which has come out in the year 2021, has shown an holistic approach to science, technology, and innovation. So this uh, this uh, STIP has laid emphasis on uh, promoting traditional knowledge systems, encouraging grassroots innovation, and also developing indigenous technologies. So this is what is expected in the near future, where innovation tech innovation from the grassroots level that can make us self-reliant. Moving on. Now, again, while we were talking about, I was telling you about uh, how our country is moving ahead in becoming Atmanirbhar. So some baby steps which we can talk of. The fighter plane pages, which we all had uh, read in the news that was developed by the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and it is the lightest and the smallest supersonic aircraft which was developed for the Indian Air Force and the Navy and uh, there are three models and we know that one or two the two models have already been are in production and the Mark 2A Mark 1 and Mark 1A is in production and Mark 2A is will be available to the Indian Air Force by 2026. So some baby steps that has been taken by our country in slowly moving ahead towards Atmanirbharata are like uh, the 
stages, then the Made in India Metro train, the Metro coach that has uh, come become functional from uh, Mumbai, the Heeser to Andheri. This uh, coach has some important features, like it has a uh, very environment. It is an uh, energy friendly um, coach. It has it provides also facilities like uh, the commuters can uh, carry their bicycles in the train. Then also it has uh, in my, it has alternate energy solutions for uh, when there is a power shortage. So these are certain things that has been uh, developed in this Made in India coach, and this was also developed by Bharat Earth Movers Limited. So again, another Indian company which has ventured into uh, the Make in India project. Similarly, the INS Vikrant, that is the first indigenous aircraft carrier which was developed by India Cochin Shipyard, which is also which is going to be commissioned during the Independence Day the, this year. So similar, there are many examples like the Made in India tanks, uh, the Arjun MK1A, which was uh, developed by DRDO. The COVID vaccine. Now we have heard our earlier speakers talking about the amazing discovery of the coronavirus vaccines, which was available, made available to us in such a short span of time. The COVID shield vaccine developed by Serum Institute and uh, the Covaxin by Bharat Biotech. The scientists worked round the clock in the laboratory. The regulatory approvals were received in a very short span of time and the trials were done so quickly and we it was the amazing result is that we could get the vaccine on time similarly in the textile industry as well as in the handicraft industry there are a lot of efforts by very skilled works artisans and worksmen who are producing small things which are now being exported to other countries so these are all small steps taken by and this is all because of the approach that the government has taken and also a vision of the entire community of scientists that small innovations should be allowed and small innovations should be made which may help us in making help in making us self-reliant similarly the electronic appliances the mobiles manufactured in india so these are some of the areas where we have already moved ahead and further innovations can certainly help in helping us help in making us more atmanirbhar some small innovations which i was reading about some great initiatives taken by some individuals like uh, arugain futsog of ladakh he had taken up organic farming in a cyclic manner. So what he was he has been doing is that he cultivates crops during a particular season and he uses the waste of that crop as manure for uh, the next crop. So there is very little wastage. So this is one uh, different kind of farming that he had taken up in a very hilly area like Ladakh. Similarly, LED bulbs. We all know that uh, most of the LED bulbs which we have been we are using at the moment are we get it from China. Most of it are made in China and it's available in all the shops here. But a person, a resident of Bihar, a village in Bihar from Oth, he set up a factory to manufacture LED bulbs, which may not be, which may not have that power capacity as that of the bulbs which are available in the market but he is able to produce led bulbs so he has set up a small factory which is uh, now manufacturing led bulbs similarly chia seeds which have been which used to be exported earlier in uh, up there is a person who has uh, taken initiative in cultivation of chia seeds our own from our own district durg we have a farmer an innovator yogesh sunka what he has done is that he has uh, created, he has developed a water retention manure from potassium based cellulose and that manure will help to retain water in the soil. So because of that water wastage can be reduced. So he has uh, helped in boosting the heal. This uh, innovation 
has uh, helped in boosting the yield of his crops and he's now working on different types of uh, manures that can be useful in different ways like which can help in water shortage and which can even uh, provide certain minerals so his uh, manure which he developed was totally made from biodegradable ingredients like uh, cow dung and it was based on it was mainly potassium based cellulose but he has used all uh, vegetable ways Similarly, we also know about the rainwater harvesting campaign made by the government. So these are all small innovations which are being done. Rainwater harvesting, there is a campaign that uh, with a catch line. Catch the rain and save the land. So this is the campaign that has been come up, that has been brought up by the government. Moving on to role of physics. Now, uh, there is, uh, we have been talking about how basic sciences contribute towards uh, making our country Atmanirbha. So, it's not only that in the, sing the, you can't single out physics alone to do a particular task. It's not like that. As I said earlier, it's all uh, interconnected, multidisciplinary research only can help us achieve uh, something. But Physics has a different role. It, it, we all know physics involves the study of matter, energy, and their interactions. And it has, it touches every aspect of our lives. We have, we know that a lot of technology that we are using today has, it's the core lies within physics. Many of the technology that has been developed, be it medicine, uh, be it some medical equipments, be it uh, electricity, be it electronics, or uh, in all these in in field of communication, the all the concept, the discovery of electricity, magnetism, the basic electronic components, the semiconductors, all these have evolved from physics. So we know that in physics plays a very crucial role in attaining sustainable development. And as we have read about, uh, we know how physics has evolved. It's, it was a classical mechanics, which slowly moved on to quantum mechanics and quantum physics, quantum mechanics paved the way for uh, nanomaterials. So, and we know about modern physics, some of the discoveries in modern physics, like X-ray, laser, some amazing discoveries like X-ray, laser, photoelectric effect. These have all helped us and has given us so many different applications. We know of laser, the laser which was uh, first discovered as by T.H. Maimon as uh, the ruby laser, the first laser that was discovered. And now the laser technology has grown to this extent that these days uh, ultra short pulses and ultra high power lasers are being used in medicine, communication, welding, cutting. So there are several applications now where physics is coming into use. And so we know that this role of physics can offer, this uh, subject can offer a lot of technological advances in the field of engineering, computer science, and as I said earlier, even medical field. Now, some of the uh, areas where we could provide solutions. Now, we were talking about how we can become self-reliant or how Atma Nirbharta can be achieved. So there are some areas which I thought could, we could uh, ask developments in science and technology and certain innovations, certain policy changes could provide solutions. Like we can think of solar power. We know that solar power, the alternate source of energy, that's abundant source of solar energy available, but we have not really used it that our country, maybe our, even our country or even the, our state, we are not able to completely utilize the solar power that can be available and convert it into solar energy, the solar energy that is available and convert it into power. So some things that can be done, like I'm very proud to say that in my hometown, that is in Kuchin, the international airport is completely solar powered. So there are uh, places where mm, total solar energy is being used. So, but it has not come into 
it does not gain popularity to that extent. So I think certain measures, if that is taken, then maybe um, solar power would be more widely used in our nation. Like establishment of uh, solar manufacturing parks. If uh, we all have heard of techno parks, similarly, if solar manufacturing parks can be set up by the government, and then that land and infrastructure can be provided to investors and also to some small private enterprises so that they can set up solar manufacturing units. Research and development should be taken up by public sector organizations. Uh, I was reading about uh, China having around 40,000 patents in solar technologies, while in our country it's only close to 300. So there is a lot of R&D to be done. And if public sector organizations can pursue that and transfer the technology to the industry, then again, the solar power manufacturing can gain momentum. Land and labor reforms can be done, which maybe this is a part of the what the government can do, provide land at subsidized costs for setting up power, solar power plants. Industrial power costs can be cut. The lower cost of capital. So all these things, if put together, maybe we can be uh, we can we will be able to produce solar power in the coming times. Similarly, to get green environment, save water. To it's all it's known to us that saving water can help us towards climate change. So that is one thing where we can uh, put our efforts in green hydrogen. Dr. Kalol Ghosh was talking about how green hydrogen can be useful as an alternate source of energy. Green hydrogen is produced by splitting of uh, water by electrolysis, where you get hydrogen and oxygen. There's no carbon dioxide. So that uh, National Hydrogen Mission is now working on it. And it in maybe in the coming years, we would be able to produce green hydrogen. Battery recycling also would help in obtaining green environment. Some other areas where advances in technology can help, like development of machines in the agricultural sector, which can help farmers to their uh, farming ways of farming can be improved. If we can, if some uh, good machines can be developed, new methods of farming are developed. Similarly, new irrigational facilities are provided to them, different tools which will help them, will make their work easier. So if agricultural sector improves, automatically our economy will also develop. So this is another way by which we can, these are all ways by which we can move towards a self-reliant India. Indigenous electronics manufacturing industry, already we know that uh, there are many states that are setting up electronics parks. So that has to be given a lot of importance so that indigenous manufacturing would take place. And we don't buy chips and uh, small electronic parts from other countries. We are able to manufacture our own. Toy manufacturing is one area. I think we all brought bought toys for our kids and mostly it's toys are uh, from, all toys are written made in China. So why not have toy manufacturing in India? And other, other areas, I'm not going into the detail, electric and fuel cell vehicles, where some innovation can happen and manufacturing can start in India. Electric vehicles are now coming. Many of the companies are now moving into electric vehicles. Similarly, electric, electricity storage systems. These are some areas which can, where we can think of innovating and in that manner we would be able to help the society in becoming self-reliant now i would like to talk about my institute christian college of engineering and technology it's a uh, ngm group of institution run by uh, it was established in 1998 it's run by the malankara orthodox syrian church mission this our institute also has uh, done some initiatives towards Atman and Hirta. We have an R&D cell, an innovation, entrepreneurship and startup cell, a techno club, industry institute interaction cell. All these 
agencies which are a part of our college they work in cohesion to organize certain activities for the students make them think towards innovation the students in their uh, minor project major project the innovation entrepreneurship and startup cell assist students in thinking coming up with creative ideas give them a platform to develop small things that can be useful to society so as a part of the minor and major projects or even otherwise they may to do a number of activities we also organize several uh, competitions for them like model making competition um and also we have a robotics club which is part of the techno club we organize uh, robotics workshop we also have an mtech program in cad cam robotics so uh, some infrastructure for uh, robotics is available in our, in our institute so these are some areas similarly industry in institute interaction cell we organize several interactions with different companies and we have talks from many institutes so i, I can show you some pictures of uh, some of the activities done by our institute these are some competitions done for the students then we have several uh, we have organized several talks by expert eminent speakers from industry from uh, we had a speaker from uh, indore uh, who runs the jimmy megaligan uh, center for sustainable development padmashri dr uh, janak megaligan who had uh, interacted with us and with our students and given a talk on sustainable growth and uh, she was also uh, has a very uh, completely Mm, uh, sort of a small village developed by her in Indore, where uh, she ha does not use any conventional source of energy as completely solar powered. And uh, some of our students had uh, initiated to visit the place also, but because of the COVID-19 pandemic, it was, uh, we could not send our students at that time and we are planning to send them very soon. So similarly, such activities are uh, organized by the Institute. And uh, we are also part of the coordinator cell of uh, Chhattisgarh Council of Science and Technology. I'm very thankful to Dr. Akhilesh Tripathi, sir, for uh, giving me this opportunity, this platform to speak here. And he was also a uh, major, uh, he has been a very good help in organizing our coordinator cell activities. Through those coordinator cell activities, we've organized several programs for, our, for school students. Like uh, we have, uh, we had organized circuit designing competition, model making competition, and uh, many other events for school students. We have organized an internet workshop for them, and also a workshop on Microsoft Office to the school students, which would give them an exposure to computers. So these are some of the activities which we have been organizing. Now we also have an MTech program in uh, nanotechnology and uh, some of the recent uh, research work that has been going on and which uh, we are able to contribute a little bit to uh, the society is uh, we have been able to develop graphene based semiconductor nanocomposites which are useful as membranes for uh, water treatment that is wastewater treatment so we are able to develop uh, if we have in our own laboratory uh, we are able to develop these nanocomposites. We've also developed uh, silicon dioxide, titanium dioxide nanocomposites, which have self-cleaning applications, which are these uh, coatings are uh, useful on solar cells, that uh, these coatings can help uh, preventing damage of the solar cells uh, when there is wear and tear. So these coatings will, uh, it's like the lotus leaf uh, when, uh, the water falls on it, the, it washes off the dirt. So these coatings are very useful. We are able, to, we have been able to develop these uh, and some papers have been published on this. We also have done some uh, research or uh, we, are, we are doing in, uh, on green synthesis of metal oxide nanoparticles, calcium oxide, zinc oxide nanoparticles, which are, which have antibacterial properties. And uh, now the methodology that has been uh, adopted is not to use, uh, because uh, in making nanomaterials, uh, the particle size has to be reduced. So the capping agents have to be used and using chemical capping agents, which are toxic uh, and harmful, 
uh, is not advisable when it has applications in medicine uh, and also for uh, some many metal oxides have applications in skin creams and the cosmetics. So it's not at all advisable. So we, the green technology, green nanotechnology is gaining a lot of importance these days. And we have also been able to uh, prepare uh, metal oxide, uh, calcium oxide nanoparticles by using flower extract, flower extract of hibiscus leaves. Uh, and also of uh, the curry leaves. Um, it's called Muraya Koenji, that is the curry patta. So we take the extract of this and use them as capping agent and we could successfully produce these metal oxide nanoparticles. So these are some of the areas where uh, we have been uh, successful and still we are into further working on these areas. Uh, I would like to close my presentation here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for your presentation on physics for Atmanirbhar Bharat. Uh, it's, it's, it, 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 we are thankful for accepting our invitation as well on behalf of council. Uh, uh, now, uh, as we have already exceeded the time limit, uh, uh, without any delay, I would like to call upon uh, uh, scientist D, uh, engineer K.S. Rao uh, of Council of Science and Technology to present his uh, present council's take on basic sciences and uh, our, our endeavor in the field of basic sciences. Uh, over to you, uh, Rao Saab. Good afternoon, myself Prof from Chhattisgarh Council of Science and Technology and today I am going to uh, deliver the speech on uh, basic science, perspectives of basic science regarding uh, with respect of Chhattisgarh Council of Science and Technology. The basic sciences are defined as the scientific disciplines of mathematics, physics, chemistry and biology. These are called basic sciences because they provide a fundamental understanding of natural phenomena and the process by which natural resources are treated. The fundamental, this fundamental knowledge about the nature and behavior of living systems and the application of that knowledge enhance, help, lengthen life and reduce illness and disability. Basic research science, it is often called fundamental or bench research, which provides the foundation of knowledge for the applied sciences that follows. This type of research encompasses uh, familiar scientific disciplines such as biochemistry, microbiology, psychology, and pharmacology. Basic science also increasingly extends the behavior to behavioral and social sciences as well, which have no less profound relevance for medicine, health, and society as a whole. Council has established in 2001 in a premises of four acres allotted in 40,000 acres. The mission, the mandate of the council is the overall man includes the basic as well as applied sciences, so as to ensure overall growth through academic industry and masses interface. The Council's current activities are R&D activities, Population of Science, Chhattisgarh Space Operation Center, Central Laboratory Facility, IPR, Technology Transfer, Coordinate Cells, Science and Societal Programs, Technology Village Program, Climate Change Cell, and Renal Science Center. Under R&D programs, we are providing minimum uh, mini research projects, travel grant, 
grant for seminars, symposia, workshops. We provide this grant. We provide this grant to the academicians of different colleges, researchers, NGOs of the state with an objective to provide a research and capacity building platform. Promotional and travel grant scheme, the cell supports for travel expenses for the academicians and researchers of the state for presentation of their research outcomes on national and international forum, including conferences, seminars, symposium, and workshop. The R&D &D is covered mainly on physical sciences, mathematical science, chemical science, arts and atmospheric science, life science, social science, engineering science. The findings of these studies have been shared with related state departments to fine tune the program. A total of about 12 crores have been already sanctioned till date for the programs on research projects. Under population of science scheme, we are having a number of schemes. Out of the main, out of the main are Chhattisgarh Young Scientist Congress, Children's Science Congress, Science Quiz com uh, Competitions, Science Parks, Mobile Science Lab, etc. The council also make effort to bring on board state level schools, institutions like SCRT, CGBSC, and Department of School Education to target students for active participation in the SNT programs. With the programs initiated, a total of 8.3 lakh students from different universities, colleges, schools of the state have been already promoted. We are already organized Year of Scientific Awareness in 2004, Venus Transit in 2004, Year of Astronomy, Appreciating Year of Physics, Year of Mathematics, Mobile, we are having a mobile science library. We have established 11 science parks and two science parks are under process. The POS program council is also operating portable planetarium to create interest in astro science. We have established 69 community science club and popular science book corners in different schools. Another program of the Council is Chhattisgarh Space Application Center, where we use remote sensing and GS applications to create maps for the benefit of the government of Chhattisgarh. We are having a uh, Vikram Sarabhai Sanitary Celebration. Exhibition on Space Technology was organized in December 2019 <coughs> at Guru Central University, Bilaspur and Bilai Institute of Technology, Dhul. The exhibition included posters regarding remote sensing and principles, rockets, satellites, etc. More than 25,000 students have been benefited from this exhibition. Another uh, scheme of the council is Central Laboratory Facility, where we are providing research facilities to the PhD and PG students. And this is one of the state or part laboratory in this state where the research facilities has been extended to different physical uh, different government departments like phe forest department agriculture department water resource department and others <coughs> laboratory facility is being provided to the students from the state and also from neighboring states for carrying out their phd and dissertation work utilizing the instrumentation and mentorship. It also provides research and implementation project conceptualized and formulation of the state in collaboration with national and state agencies. The laboratory is having state-of-art equipment that are not found in any other laboratories in the state. These are the, some of the glimpses of our research activities. <clears throat> Another scheme is science and societal programs, where council supports numerous programs for the elevation and upliftment of science, uh, and ST, women, and vehicle section. Programs has a mandate to promote scientific inquiry and ST awareness among its general masses. Other programs, which we generally uh, we, uh, grant, are health and hygiene, 
environmental and climate change, sustainable agriculture, medical awareness, and value addition programs. We are having a technology village program where in order to or in order to provide uh, social economic development activities in the state, we have uh, established four uh, technology villages at Rampur, uh, Kabizam village, Jamtari village, Bilaspur village, uh, Bilaspur district, and Ramanujan district. The technology village also acts as a catalyst for the council's extension activities in science and technology in rural areas. <coughs> Climate change cell. This is another program of the council where the objective to promote research in the area of climate change. Council has established the climate change cell and has been allocated existing multidisciplinary manpower for its functioning. With its formation, council is participating in the climate change group, climate footprint project, Ricardo, ECLEI. CDP and Greenhouse Management Institute as knowledge partners and has actively provided technical input for inventory of GHG emissions from various development sectors of the state. Another scheme, this is the Regional Science Center, a part of the Science City. The Council is having uh, with a view of establishing Science City, it has established in the initial state a regional science center in the year 2009-10. It has spread overall in, in an area of 10 acres. And by the date, 6 lakh visitors have already visited this center. Mandate of regional science center is to inculcate understanding of basic science principles through models, exhibitions, and movies. Another scheme that is coming up is Innovation Hub. The objective is to facilitate innovative ideas, generating and learn by means of Toro, Poro, and Juro. Renal Science Center is establishing Innovation Center, Innovation Hub at Raipur. The new one, the mini Renal Science Center, that is Category 3, is upcoming at Raigad. Another is which is working in the state at Raipur is Immersive Dome. Immersive Dome was built in Nava Raipur by Nava Raipur Atal Nagar Vikas Pradikaran. The production of the film shown in this immersive dome uses a panoramic effect and the specialty technology of computer animation with live photographs. And in a very short period, this immersive dome will be operated by the Chhattisgarh Regional Science Center in collaboration with Chhattisgarh Council of Science and Technology. Thank you. This was the council's take on uh, basic sciences. Council with its mandate of uh, overall development of science and technology in the state has various uh, domains uh, from uh, central laboratory facility to uh, remote sensing application center to technology village programs wherein the extension activities uh, for awareness specifically in the uh, basic sciences is being done by the council. Uh, so uh, with this, we come to an end uh, of today's program with the theme of basic sciences for Atmanir Bharata, uh, Chhattisgarh perspective or the perspective of council which included in that. Uh, so I take this opportunity to thank uh, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, uh, officials from Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, uh, for giving us an opportunity to represent uh, Chhattisgarh state uh, on this theme. Uh, we, we also thank the participants, uh, especially those special uh, guest speakers, Dr. Kalol Ghosh, Dr. Govardhan Bhatt, Professor M. M. Humberde, Dr. R. K. Bajpayee, Dr. Deep Mala Sharma, Dr. Sandhya Pillai, and from Council of Science and Technology Engineer K. S. Rao. Uh, I, uh, lastly but not the least, uh, would like to thank uh, the organizers of this program, uh, the team which was organizing this program, Dr. Mayan Chandravanshi, Dr. Uh, 
uh, uh, Akhilesh Tripathi and Dr. Vaseem Raza. Uh, I also thank the participants uh, who, who actually actively participated in the program and listened to uh, all these discussions. I, I hope that they would be benefited and would definitely get aware of council activities apart from the activities which are being organized by other uh, sects or other uh, uh, institutions in the state. So with this, I thank uh, lastly, but not the least, I also thank the officials of the Council of Science and Technology, Director General, sir, for, for giving us an opportunity to organize this program. This is uh, Chhattisgarh Council of Science and Technology signing off. Thank you. Thank you to all. Thanks a lot.